Arena. The more than 14,000 on hand loved it. First period, Don Ebert with the deflection scoring, giving them a 2-1 to -one lead. The first of two goals for Eves. Now look at Slobo out of the net. Daryl Duran picks it up, moves into the zone. The shot is deflected. Duran getting the goal, making it 3-1 to -one for the steam machine. We go to quarter number three. Ricky Davis, beautifully set up, knocks it home off a Comets defender, and the steamers cruising at 5-2. to two. Fourth period, Ebert getting his second goal of the game as he poked it home, making it 8-3. to three. It is now 9-4. Correction, the steamers have just scored again. They lead it 10-4 late in the fourth quarter. On the hockey scene, last night's injury suffered by Blues captain Brian Sutter is more serious than originally thought. Sutter suffered a complete fracture of the scapula and will miss. Tonight's Zippo is edited by Channel 2's Robert Coleman. We will begin with the best catch by a man out the field of play. Stanley Morgan going out. Glenn Blackwell comes over to cover him. Watch who catches the ball. <laughs> best alley-oop of the week. Roy Hinson, Cleveland Cavaliers, yes. The worst sportsmanship of the week. Mark Clayton saying, come on, ref. The weirdest hat of the week. Look at this fan in Washington. Ah, hang on to that hat, fella. The worst dunk of the week, Michael Cooper of the Lakers. The basketball fight of the week. Manute Bull attacked by Jawan Oldham and the two seven-footers going at it in Chicago. Huh. God, this is basketball, guys. Come on. The headbutt of the week in hockey. Bob Probert wants it again. Headbutts him. Come on. The best reaction in basketball, Otis Birdsong lets it fly, yeah! The award of the week to Bob Pulford. All right, the tip pass of the week, the Dolphins and the Dol and the Patriots. Who wants it? Nobody got it. The na 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 award to Don Blackman, take that! The weirdest goal of the week, the North Stars. Brian Bellow shoots, it's stopped by Murray Bannerman. Bannerman looks to clear the puck. He knocks it into Bellows, who deflects it off his body, off the shoulder of Keith Brown, and into the net for a Minnesota goal. The worst trip of the week by a youngster in hockey. Uh, whoop, down he goes. The worst mascot skating exhibition of the week. Look at this. Whoop, the splits. The worst dunk of the week, Jawan Oldham, where is it? The best pass of the week, Rory Sparrow of the Knicks lets it go and in the basket. Rory said, I shoot from there all the time. And finally, in this nice weather, Larry Connors breaking out the convertible to get to work at Channel 2. And that's it for the Zippos tonight, Larry. <laughs> well, I'm glad you caught me on that. Yeah, I did. Thank you, Zip. Still to come tonight, they'll try again tomorrow to land the space shuttle. It looked like an attack by an alien spacecraft been feuding for years. Well, tonight was no different. Only the steamers have won this battle. Let's go to the arena where the steamers set a major milestone. They went over the two million market attendance, the first team in the MISL to ever do that. We pick it up first quarter. Redmond Lane, the shot, it bleeds over the goal line, and it's one nothing steamers. But the Comets come back to tie. A pretty goal here. Keith Furphy will score, and it was one to one. Still first quarter now, and it's Lane again. On the left side, then Don Ebert with the deflection and make it 2-1 to one steamers. Count goes to 3-1. Check this out. Daryl Durant from way out front, he bounces it in somehow. In the second quarter, near side, Greg Makowski, the boomer. He will score, and the Steamers have just taken complete control of this one. It isn't over, but it really is. Steamers lead fourth quarter 9-4. to four. The Steamers are now off till Wednesday when they'll play at Baltimore. To hockey, some bad news for the Blues today. The word from Blues... Irish National Anthem, as well as ours. Obviously, a lot of folks decked out in green tonight. And for all you Irish folk out there, a happy eve of St. Patty's Day. Bob Burnett and I would like to wish that to you. And we're on the road in Richfield Coliseum, just outside Cleveland, to take on the Cleveland Force. Bob, this team scared the heck out of us at home last week. And now we'll take a look at the standings in the East Division of the MISL. The Steamers are a game ahead of Cleveland, but it, as you might note, Cleveland has two games in hand, having played two less. Minnesota... I'm very grateful to you for this information. The NBC is the now the most powerful television network in the entire world. Whether we like it or not. We just don't care, ladies and gentlemen. Are you absolutely certain 
They're number one. They all say that. Guess again, bucko. Let us show you. Upham is marking up on Armando. Left wing, a flick-on pass by Ebert. Far of oh, court. Trapping it as Mepham along the boards, and then he just walks the ball to the goalkeeper, Vaccaro. Never, ever seen that before. No whistle. Play on. Left wing, Craig Allen, just back from his injury. 58 points in 30 games. In the corner against Bellinger, Tony wrote him off the ball, and Duran leaves it for Betancourt. Armando waited too long, and it's taken away for Cleveland. Ali Kazamani hit it just wide. Well, you can't hold that ball in your defensive end, Bob. You can, not in your third. Have to clear it out. Built that last night. Hoskabee from the right wing, wide of Allen on the left, trying to go toward that post. Allen picks up a loose ball in the corner. They center Duran there to sweep it away. for the steamers to midfield. Boy, Cleveland, pep talk. Had to be before the ball game. They're coming out, fired up. They're ready to go. Marking all over the field, and they've got some zip. Big crowd on hand tonight. They're expecting 15,000 or so. They're averaging 12,365 a game here at the Richfield Coliseum. And oddly enough, they're only 9-8 and eight at home this year. Much worse than last year. Bellinger, long ball, right wing. Sammy Vick running onto it. Getting there first, though, and back to the keeper is Mike Sweeney. Probably got to withstand that initial surge that they've got going right now. Vaccaro, a long throw for Andy Chapman. He was fouled on the shot. Boy, this place would have gone crazy if that ball had gone in after they called the foul. I don't know why they didn't let that play continue. Murphy on top for Sweeney. They roll it in for Chapman, who loves to set up at the top of the box and turn. It comes loose on the right side boards, and Tim Schultz plays it ahead for Don Ebert. Steamers leading score, leaving it for Schultz. He's ridden off the ball, and Murphy starts back the other way. Right side, Andy Chapman against Draghi. Shooting it in, Murphy misses on the deflection. In the corner, slapped out in front. And Peter Ward a touch on it there. It's Furphy on the right boards, beating Draghi to the corner. In front, and Tim Walters there to make the defensive play. And Furphy fell over at Gettemeyer on the way in. The pace is furious, and most of it belongs to Cleveland. We're getting ready to play now. It's tough coming in here, especially when they come out hard. Just have to withstand them. Play him even right here and hopefully get a goal. Get a long power. A long right wing ball for Walters. He was taken off the ball by Andy Chapman, making a rare appearance back on defense. Up to midfield, Mike Sweeney. Straight ahead, pass catch at Torrey. He's on now with Pesa, McDonald, Draghi, and Schultz. Schultz actually the midfielder on this line. With Ricky Davis and Glavin, a couple of guys who've been playing midfield and very well at home tonight. In front, Murphy. Big save, get him out. Rebound and hit Furphy, who was laying there in front of Peter Ward. Deemer's a bit lucky, and then Gettemeyer was fouled by Furphy. The rebound hit Furphy, who was laying on the turf, Bob, or else it might have been 1 0. And a good save by Eddie on the shot before that. The initial save was great save. You see where Cleveland's coming inside. Eddie down. You've got to get down like he did. We've got to break on that second one. Hit Furphy. And then when Gettemeyer caught it in the air, Furphy ran into him. McEwen, long ball over the top for Diego Pesa. He can't read it off the boards, and Chris Vaccaro picks it up. Chris Vaccaro, 6'170", 25 years old. He's an American, and he has a goals against a 4.76, 10-7 on the year. Had one of the great games we've seen for a keeper all year against the Steamers back here in December when he faced 49 shots and beat St. Louis 5-3. Bellinger leaves it for McEwen. Duncan clears the midfield. Back to get it, team captain Kai Hauskevi. He'll play it for big Dennis Mepham. We got in this pattern last week again. Cleveland after we were up 6-1 and they came back to tie us up. We were playing just kick in and kick out soccer, not getting anywhere with it. Interception, Redmond Lane in midfield. Red's been red hot so far. In the slot, top of the slot, he goes right side for Sammy Bick. Sammy at the point, looking into the corner. Wants to center, he's tripped from behind by Kazamani and Jeff Mantell trailing the play, said play on. If we switch fields on them again, looks like we can do some good from the back. They're not, their forwards aren't marking up on our defenders that well. If they get themselves free and can get into that space, we can get some shots off, at least play it off the glass and come in with our forwards and midfielders. Greg Allen near side for Hoskabee. Good interception by Jeff Cacciatore, who is backtracking. Armando Betancourt after Gettemeyer's throw down the left wing against Big Bernie James. He will shoot. It is wide to the far corner. Draghi in there offensively. Gets it loose for Redmond Lane. Red looking to shoot. Does. Blocked by Mepham. Betancourt can't reach the rebound. And Vaccaro clears off to the left side for Craig Allen. 
Craig Allen from the Channel Islands. Right side, Hoskivy, rebound in front, look out. Allen gets it wide, and Draghi can't clear, but Furphy gives it right to Duran. Now Darrell breaks out after a touch by Craig Allen, and it's bumped into the stands on the far side by Furphy. It'll be a kick in for St. Louis. We're 5-0-1 in and scoreless from Cleveland. This is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. Oh, so it's your turn to cook, huh, Dad? Yes, indeed. Who said that? I did. Take a minute to think about the nutritional value of the food you eat. Here's some food for thought from Schnucks. Try the fish. It's an excellent source of protein that's high in vitamins and minerals. Yeah? And it's easy to cook. Try the fresh sole from Schnucks Seafood Shop. Karen picked it up today. Learn more about good nutrition when you take the nutrition quiz at Schnucks. Hey, honey, how about some lemon sole a la Jeffrey? Bob Carpenter along with Bob Burnett for the Richfield Coliseum. We are five minutes and one second into the first quarter and scoreless. Reggie, left side ball, long ball off the kick in for Betancourt. Armando with his back to the goal in the left corner against Mike Sweeney. Turning toward the boards in front, and Ebert couldn't poke it in. McDonald a shot is blocked after the defense by Benny Dargo. Boy, great effort by Armando Betancourt, and Ebert almost clipped it in there. Now Draghi. Gives it right to Dargle, ahead to Chapman. He shoots, and Gettemeyer is there to make the save. Two big saves for Ed Gettemeyer, Bob, in the first six minutes of this game. Now off the long throw by Ed. Macaro puts it to the crowd on the near side. St. Louis kick in. Boy, there was two fouls right here at the end. Perfy just pushed off, just a stiff on, pushed Armando away, and Don Ebert going down there before had the shot on goal, and he definitely was fouled and knocked on, pushed off the ball, the official right there. This is going to end up to be a very, very physical ball game. They're going to have to get on top of it quick. Left side, McDonald with the free kick for St. Louis. Actually, a kick in. Kenny Mack plays it around the boards. Betancourt had it swept away by Dargle, and now Furphy gets a releasing pass from Peter Ward and puts it left side for Sweeney. Sweeney centers. McDonald rejects to midfield. Benny Dargle. Cleveland, right wing. Furphy against Duran in the middle, and a shot wide. Rebound, Chapman high, and headed away by McDonald. Half volley, Dargle into the stands. It'll be a goal kick for St. Louis. Cleveland shoot, shoot, shooting away, and the Steamer surviving, and it's still scoreless. 9.05 first quarter. This is St. Louis Steamer soccer. J.C. was the nicest little boy, so quiet and shy. He always respected authority and never said anything bad about anyone. What a gentleman. Well, even the neighbors talk about what an influence my J.C. was. I mean, look what a great influence he's been on that Hewlett kid. J.C.'s a delight, but I do wish he'd learn to joke more and say Sometimes what he thinks. Sometimes Ma don't I mean, remember so good. <laughs> I'm J.C. And I'm that Hewlett kid. The Morning Zoo. On KC95. She didn't mean it, John. Goal kick for Ed Gettemeyer and the St. Louis Steamers. Steady Eddie is making his 19th appearance of the year. And he looks like he's been hungry to play, Bob. He's made two big saves here in the early going. Eddie's always ready to play. Just a great competitor, along with Slobo, along with the whole Steamer team. Left side, Schultz. And this will be a valuable night for Slobo to have off as well after playing two games in the last three nights. Steamers will be off until Friday when Minnesota comes calling. One thing we're going to have to note here is that, you know, we're going to have a, some line changes now that we don't have Ricky Davis and Tony Glavin tonight, and they were just getting into the swing of things, working with those lines, and we're making some adjustments, and that's going to have a little effect on us this first quarter. If we could just hang in there, stay even, get ourselves acclimated to it, we'll be okay. Greg Allen centering, Kazamani running onto it, Sammy Bick stepped in front of that one to block it. And on the near board, Sammy bumps with Allen, clears the midfield. Pesa cut down hard by James. Play on. Here comes Walters. Timmy trying to play it to himself off the boards. Diego couldn't believe there wasn't a foul call. He was chopped down hard at midfield. Here's Cosimani back the other way. Dennis Metlum against Pesa. On the left wing boards, team captain and quarterback Kai Hosgeby. Top of the slot against Bellinger. Tony got a piece of it, and Sammy Bick comes away. Left boards for Tim Walters. Here come the Steamers. Three on two. Walters left, Bick right, Pesa in the middle. Shot on goal. That's about the only thing you don't want in that situation. Not right at him. We need to play. He could have cut it back. Or off the board, so it comes out in front either way. A foul on Bellinger down the right side on Craig Allen. That is foul number two on the Steamers. Cleveland has one. Foul's not a big factor so far. We're almost halfway through the first quarter. Hoskovy around the boards. Ball touched there by Allen. Hoskovy in the corner. 
Schultze on him. Centers. Ooh, Allen fanned on it. Maybe in his first game back, Allen fans on that one, but other times that would have been a goal. This is his return from an injury tonight. Schultz bumping with Furphy and getting control. And Furphy got Tim from behind and gets it back from Hoskovy. Shooting in wide, rebound, swept away by Bellinger. Sweeney, pass Cacciatore, right corner. Draghi a touch, Cacciatore with control. He clears it out, at least near the red line. At the point, Peter Ward back on top for Benny Dargle. Cleveland won't run their backs through too much. I think we can take a chance with our forwards and double up on their forwards because they are big and strong, and our defenders right now are having a little problem with them. Take a chance. Catch a Tory. Pace a double back. Help us out. Ward in the slot. Right side, Furphy. Looking for that left-footed shot. That's Keith Furphy's only weakness when he has to go to the right foot. Left wing Dargle knocked away momentarily by Cacciatore. Then he centers for Ward against Draghi. Or rather, Sweeney is shot wide. Bellinger back to the keeper. Tony made it too short. And Ward's shot was deflected away by Gettemeyer, who's having a tremendous first quarter. We're still scoreless, thank goodness. This is St. Louis Steamer soccer. Strength. Pride. Tradition. For centuries, the Clydesdales have been known as a special breed. Today, the Clydesdales symbolize Budweiser's dedication to quality, superior ingredients, exclusive beechwood aging, and a distinctively clean, crisp taste only Budweiser can offer. Quality taste, because this Bud's for you. Another big save by Ed Gennemeyer. Bob Burnett kept the steamer scoreless. A defender, if you're going to play the ball back to the keeper, you're going to have to have some velocity. You never want to play the ball back right on goal unless you're really sure and you can't lay it back tough. Just a mistake. Eddie saved a goal. Of eight shots on goal so far, Cleveland has six. Dargo on the right wing will play it in for Mike Sweeney. Top of the circle intended for Chapman. Taken away by Redmond Lane. He breaks down the right wing. Vaccaro out of his net. He fans on it. In the corner, Red tries to take it away. Vaccaro manages to clear. It would have gone to McDonald, but it hit Jeff Mantello and right to Cleveland. Now Peter Ward fouls McDonald. That'll be two fouls on each team. We got the spark plug out there, Redmond Lane. Now, if he can spark the rest of Jeff's out there with him, we just need some movement in the back. McEwen in left corner. Redmond centers. Vaccaro punches it down. Dargo hands it right to Duncan. A shot high into the crowd. It'll be a goal kick. 6.02 remaining in the first quarter of play. We're scoreless at Cleveland. Steamers are 6-12 and 12 on the road this year, Bob. And they've compensated with an outstanding home record of 14-6. and six. Their defense is carrying them tonight. So far, as usual, team defense. We're a little sloppy at times, but when you're playing away, that's what you're going to have to lean on and then play for those breaks. We almost got one right there with a guy like Redmond Lane going in. He could have scored on it. Duncan McEwen, Duncan McEwen got a big job tonight. He's going to have to fill it in that midfield. And, and our defenders are going to have to play to him just like they do to Tony Glavin. Let Tony and Duncan here orchestrate that, that flow of the game. Had lunch with Duncan and Redmond Lane and Don Drake today, and they were both kidding Redmond that he was going to have a tough time scoring tonight with Tony and Ricky sitting at home. Because they've done a good job of setting Red up recently for some goals, especially Tony Glavin. Oh, Vaccaro hands it right to Cacciatore. Now Redmond Lane has it, tries to clip it left side for catch. Chapman was there, Hoskiby clears it down, but McDonald there to cut it off. Kenny Mack down the middle, Redmond Lane can't get it, knocked down by Mepham, catch for Red on the left side, and it's cleared down the floor by big, tough Bernie James. McDonald tried to head it off the glass for Sammy Bitt. Over the glass, kick in Cleveland, right wing in the midfield area. Now Betancourt and Ebert come on to replace Cacciatore and Redmond Lane. We've got 5.22 left in a scoreless first quarter. Again, Cleveland being sure, being sound defensively, and I think that's one of the reasons that they're not running their backs through so far. They they know that the Steamers have a great counterattack, and they want to make sure they're not burnt on it. Oscar be top of the circle for Chapman. He can't turn. Kenny Mack refused to let him turn. If you can't deny Chapman the ball, play him a little bit to his left because he turns much better toward his right foot than he does with his left. And he's got to turn to his left to get that right-footed shot away. Right point for Draghi against Allen. Left point, McDonald. Ken Mack just got a good shot from out there. He hits it on goal and Vaccaro punching it down. Coming out of there, Bernie James. Bernie James looked up. He thought sure a foul was going to be called. It was not. It continued on. Cleveland in control. 440 left first quarter. Hoskivy. 
Tried to bump it through for Cosimani, and Drake was there to steal. Now Don Drake pushing up. That leaves Duran open it back, and he hands it right to Hoskovy in front, and get him out, another save. Hoskovy never saw Craig Allen coming down the left wing unmarked. Ball knocked out to the red line. Betancourt pulls it down for the Steamers. In the middle for Draghi. Now Don Draghi starts back the other way. He had to hold up after Betancourt fell down. That left him with a lack of support up front. We have to be ready physically. It seems to me that the flow of the game with the officials at this point, they're sort of letting them play on. So we're going to have to be ready and not wait for a whistle, but just play it till you hear it and protect ourselves because they're coming at us pretty good. Left side, Bernie James for Cosimini. Right point, and McDonald clears the midfield. Back to Dennis Mepham. Steamers just dumping it out. Bernie James gets it back from Hoskovy. You know, under pressure, Bob, you you have to play it out of that third, but sometimes when you got space and you just play it out, you give up possession now. And we don't have to be in a hurry now. We get a chance. They're not they're slow getting back, but if we don't get that opportunity, build it up. Let's get organized and let's get the good shot on goal. Ebert, left side for Durant at the red line of Cleveland. Down the left wing boards, beyond the reach of Bettencourt. Not a good ball. There's James, pressured by Ebert in the corner. Clears and hits the official. Comes right back to Don. Bettencourt, chance for a shot. Gets it to his left. He shoots, and it's off the glass. Boy, Armando set up for that left-footed shot. He's a natural left-footer. He hit it well, but a little bit high. Now Ebert trying to surprise McCarroll. And Chris made the save. Right side, long throw. Peter Ward inside and hit Furphy. Comes back and gives Bellinger a chance to defend. Tony B can't strip it away from Ward. Now does. And they're going to call Bellinger for a foul. I don't understand that one at all from Joe Mantra. Tony kicked the ball. Left side, Dargo with a loose ball. And Walters blocked it. Peter Ward has shot into the crowd. Goal kick St. Louis. Well, Bob, you said a minute ago they're letting them play. It's obvious they're looking for the chippy fouls. They certainly are. That's what Tony B is complaining about because he definitely was pulled off the ball when he was trying to win along the boards, and then when he went out, same type of a foul, but a call, a play, but it was called as a foul. Cleveland, assuming that space back in there, once they get inside our third, they're closing up. We're going to have to get in the box and make sure we're goal side on them because they're firing in from the back. And once the shot is taken, everyone has to have a man and be goal side. Sammy Bick on defense, back to Gettemeyer. Teamers have a special promotion for the game on Friday night at home coming up. We'll tell you about that a little bit later. With the good folks at McDonald's. At midfield, Pesa, left side, Bellinger, along the boards, Tony B to the corner, beating Dargo, but then he gets help from Ward, and they're going to call Bellinger for a foul as he aggressively went into the corner. Tony's Cleveland. a little upset. Quick restart to Vaccaro. Bob, what about their defense? Last time we were here, they fell back to their own red line, let the steamers come at them and waited for counterattacks. Tonight they're marking up a little closer to midfield than they did that night. They are, but we're not playing as we did last night with one and two touch, let the ball do the work and running a lot. We're going to have to pick that up because we can do it. Chapman in front, good centering pass, good defense by Tim Walters. In the corner, Dargo, and it's punched away by Gennemeyer, header by Furphy, and then it was fanned on by Peter Ward. Sweeney in the corner, on the boards for Furphy, and Gettemeyer will control. You know, you can't depend on your goalkeeper all night. You've got to get an attack going. Ed has been tremendous so far. Steamers have to get something going at the other end, and it starts from the back with Sammy Vick. He lays it off for Schultz. Long ball down the middle. Walters trapping on the far boards. Timmy banks it in front, no one there. But Carroll looking downfield. It's one of those I hope passes. They worked something. He anticipated. Diego running forward. Could have been right on the play. Would have been a good, good goal. A kick by the goalkeeper into the penalty box on the near side. In the defense of Tim Walters, Timmy hasn't played a whole lot lately, so his rhythm's bound to be a little bit off. Training's not like playing in games. Well, Diego makes a run in the corner, and I, I think that's what Timmy thought he was going to do, and he plays it off the glass or board right to him, and he runs onto the ball. He has a good shot. The Steamers will take on Minnesota at the arena next Friday night. McDonald's restaurants will give away many soccer balls to the first 5,000 children, 16 and under. Tickets available at all the regular Steamer locations. At the red line, McEwen, through ball. Catch it, Curry, never got there. Craig Allen cut it off. Duncan a whack at it in midfield. Ken McDonald taking off the ball by Allen. He's down the right wing. One on one, a shot. Two feet wide to the far post. Kazamani at midfield for Bernie James. Right point, Mepham. All the steamers behind the ball, marking up man-to-man. -man. 
25 seconds left in the first quarter. Still scoreless, thanks mainly to Ed Gedemar. He's made some outstanding saves. Clearance by McDonald ahead for McEwen. Duncan cuts it inside of midfield. Cacciatore set a little pick for him and then breaks for the pass left wing. Look out, Nepham on little Cacciatore. Jeff holding it there. Big mismatch there as he lays it off for McEwen. Duncan to the corner, can't get there. Nepham cut it off. 20 seconds left. Right boards for Craig Allen. Down the slot comes Hoskiewicz. Trying to feed it right side for Allen. Look out, McDonald just stood there and let Gedemar come back to get it. Maybe Ed didn't come out quick enough, but Ken McDonald's got to get a touch on that ball because it was bouncing way too slowly. Eddie called Kenny off. And Eddie, with his hand, verbally called her, with his hand, motioned him off. So Kenny McDonald slows up, but then Eddie stopped. You're right. Hoskabee coming from the back. Almost intercepted and scored. Some anxious moments for the Steamers, but a scoreless first quarter after 15 minutes of play. This is St. Louis Steamers soccer. Times change. Remember money in the bank? It meant stability, security. But then my old bank had so many new names and different owners, I wondered who's running my bank anyway. It's different now. I belong to Anheuser-Busch Employees Credit Union. I know who's in charge. People like me. It's dependable. Always been run by and for its members. That's the intelligent difference. Who's running your bank? <laughs> When will my boys get a look at this babe? Babe. Babe Ruth. You're getting a nickname and the job. This is the true story of America's number one baseball star. I must have the winner. Don't you worry, Connie. We're going to take your team from peanuts to pennants, ain't we, Hug? We'll get you enough pennants to make a quilt, won't we, Hug? <laughs> An American classic, The Babe Ruth Story, with only three interruptions, Sunday at noon here on Channel 30. So you're going to have to prove to me if there's a difference between one or the other. Soap is soap, as far as I can tell. That's what Patnopolis thought until she tried zest on one arm, her deodorant soap on the other. Can you see what's happening? I don't know, you can. Look, watch this. Watch this. And I assume that's got to mean there's still soap there. The zest side feels cleaner to me. Well, I'm going to switch to the zest. For me, zest is the best one. Think all deodorant bars are the same? Try zest. When it comes to feeling clean, zest is best. Now that I know that the cost of tuition isn't going to sideline my college plans, I can really enjoy my last year of high school. Introducing the new GI Bill and the new Army College Fund. If you qualify, you can sign up now, join in July, and earn over $25,000 for college while you serve America. Be all that you can be. Find out more about the new GI Bill and the new Army College Fund from your Army recruit. Find your future in the Army. We're at the Richfield Coliseum in Ohio where a good crowd is gathered. It's scoreless after 15 minutes of play between the St. Louis Steamers and the Cleveland Force. And it's thanks mainly to number 32 of St. Louis. The St. Louisan, Ed Gedemeyer. Bob, he's had an outstanding first quarter in the Nets. He's kept us in the ball game. You know, playing last night, playing very, very well, regardless, and then getting up this morning and coming, you're going to have to get your legs on, so to speak, and visiting in here. Had it not been for Eddie, you're right. We would be back one or two goals. And then Friday night, the Steamers take on the Minnesota Strikers. McDonald's will give away mini soccer balls to the first 5,000 children through the gates, 16 and under. Tickets are available at the arena box office. Famous bar stores are called Charge a Ticket, 231-1234. Discounts available for groups of 20 or more. For more information, call the Steamers at the arena, 781-4030. And when we get a chance a little bit later, we'll tell you about the upcoming Steamers Awards Banquet next month. Kickoff, second quarter, Ed Gedemeyer heads it into the stands on a long ball by Keith Furphy. Cleveland moving from right to left in their home yellows. Steamers in the road blues going from left to right. Kick in for the force. Furphy had it hit Ebert, went right to Sweeney. His shot actually blocked by Andy Chapman. Bellinger on the near side for Armando Betancourt. Armando holding it again, taken away from him, and he dumps his man. That's going to be a foul. Armando's going to have to get rid of the ball quickly, or we're going to be behind one nothing quickly. It was Peter Ward that he dumped. Right side, Dargle. Busy first period for Gettemeyer with six saves. Cleveland outshot St. Louis 9-4 in the period. Six saves for Gettemeyer, one for Chris Vaccaro. 
Long throw, right side, Ebert breaking in to the corner, bat angle, looking to turn. He's knocked down. That'll be a foul. Don Ebert, one of the best in the league, maybe the best I've seen, at letting the ball play for itself off the boards and then turning and looking toward that far corner of the net. Ricky Davis scored a goal like that the other night at home. Duran on top for Betancourt. That one's blocked. Sammy Bick, nice fake to get away from Chapman. Left side, Ebert flicks it in, and Vaccaro there to pick it up. Long throw, left wing, Andy Chapman. Bellinger on him. Andy to the corner. Plays it all the way back on top for Sweeney. Right side, Dargle. Ebert marking up there. They roll it in. Bellinger knocks it away from Chapman. Dargle took down Duran. Play on as the Steamers have possession. Now a giveaway in front, Furphy and Chapman. Empty net. They hit it just wide. Andy Chapman looked like he was going to poke it home. Give Ed Gettemar credit, Bob. He came out and challenged both shooters. He had to. We were caught talking to the official. We thought that we were fouled again, and he didn't blow it, and they got the ball on an interception and walked in with it. Eddie Gettemar saved a goal. Long throw right side for Pesa. Diego taken off the ball by Sweeney. Vaccaro ahead. Far Cosimini. On the near side is Big Bernie James. Cosimini with Duran watching him in the Cleveland defensive red line. He speeds down the wing, beating Darrell by a step to the corner. Centers, and Bick is there to knock it away. Or it would have been an easy tip-in for Craig Allen. Sammy then gets it ahead to Walters. Timmy near side for Niego. Pesa right side in the corner for Walters. Bad angle, a shot, and Vaccaro almost got beat Bob on that near post. He barely got the hand down. Walters surprised him with that low shot. He protected that sharp corner. It's a good thing he did. You're right. He made a fine save with that left hand. Almost caught him going the other way. Left side, Timmy. Back to Gettemeyer on an interception. Walters now doing a good job at both ends of the floor, especially defensively so far. McDonald, that's over three lines. Offside, back to the red line of St. Louis. It'll come for a Cleveland free kick. Cleveland forwards are taking that chance. They know that the Cleveland backs are not coming forward. That time, Timmy Walters just left his man alone, came back and helped out on the defender, and we can get away with it. The only guy we're going to have to watch coming from the back. Ooh, Bernie James, a shot high and wide. Who is that? For sure, it's Kai Hoskaby because okay. he can do that, and he was positioned right in the middle. But we've got to take chances. Dennis Meppham will come from the back also, so I think it all depends who they have out there. And Meppham's one of the speediest big men in the league. Hoskaby left wing. Excellent play. Ken McDonald to ride him off the ball. On the near boards, it's a battle between McEwen, Walters, McDonald, Hoskaby, and Allen. Cleveland wins it. Meppham hit the ball with his left foot. The only problem was he was trying to shoot it with his right foot. Through ball, nicely done. McEwen, left wing for Draghi. Big Don leaves it for Pesa. Diego looking to wind up. Can't get a shot. Has a man behind him at the point. McEwen, slide tackle. Meckham to take it away. Here's House to be one-on-one -on -one against McDonald. Draghi gets back. They got a man open left side. Craig Allen and Hoskiby forced to shoot. Had it blocked by Draghi. Right side, Meckham for Hoskiby. He hit it just wide. Bernie James taking off the ball. Here's Walters back the other way for St. Louis. Pesa trailing at midfield. Diego gets it away momentarily. Shooting! Vaccaro the save. Rebound. Walters on the header high and wide. Diego from the red line almost beat him. Here's Kirsty. Counter attack for Cleveland. To his left. He will whack it. Too close to the goal. And Schultz makes the play. Rebound in front. Ball loose. And they're going to get a handball on Cleveland. Ed Gettemeyer helped the official make the call. Cleveland has that, those good size forwards, and they'll take that shot, and the other two forwards or that midfielder, they'll get inside that box and just try to out physical you. That physical play you out there, and you just have to stay with them. We, we can stay away from their backs and help inside that box. You know, when Furphy gets wide to that corner, Bob, and spreads out your defense, that's a heap of trouble. Not only Furphy, Hoskabee's good size, Craig Allen in there, you know, they just do a good job. But we're in their goal side. Kenny McDonald doing a fine job. Ken Draghi, we're playing great in there. A lot of people don't realize about Hoskabee. He's a very skillful player, but he's built like a bull. Long ball, right side, Furphy. Trying to turn it, Peter Ward on the far boards. Redmond Lane chasing Penny Dargle. Dargle went down. Redmond did make contact with him. Dargle delayed a bit before going to the turf. 
Two fouls on each team now. We're 10.40 remaining before halftime and still scoreless. Look at Andy Chapman right on that post again. Kenny McDonald, he knows him because Andy beat him last year in a playoff, so Kenny's going to play him tough. Murphy in the corner. Got a bump from Kennedy in front. Chapman shoots it wide. Greg Kennedy for the Steamers on for the first time. Here's Redmond Lane breaking out of his own defensive zone. Left wing. Chapman catching up. Redmond can only get a weak shot away. How about that defense by Andy Chapman? Oh, he's quick. He might have saved the goal. Here's Peter Warren. Does he have enough left, though, to get back to the other end? Andy's just trotting now. Redmond Lane had two steps on him, and he caught him. And we know Redmond Lane is quick. Tim Schultz, right wing. Head for Armando. He's going to lay it off. He's chopped down hard. Foul by Benny Gargo. Last year, that would have been two minutes. Sure would have. Not this time with a six-foul rule. Three fouls on Cleveland now. Daryl Duran, top of the slot, 50 feet from the goal with a free kick, asking for a little room. Right side for Bellinger at the point. Tony B against Hoskins, two very skillful players. He lays it off for Duran. Daryl, pull tops it to his left, shooting it in, blocked by Metham in front. We're not moving out there, Bob. We're just standing looking now. We've got to move off the ball, make them work. Betancourt, left side for Bick. Sammy in the air, in the corner for Ebert. Eves knocked off the ball by Mepham. Play on, says the official, as Mepham physically took Don Ebert off it. And back to Vaccaro. Don Ebert always draws the tough guys, like Mepham, Max Thompson of Baltimore. Tough to play against those kind of guys night in and night out. Kazamani in front, Getemeyer takes it off the foot of Craig Allen. You see where Gerald Duran was? Goal side on Craig Allen. A very quick Cleveland counter attack back the other way, coach. The chest of Bettencourt into the penalty box. We'll take a timeout. 9-14, second quarter. We're still scoreless. Surprised? This is the St. Louis Steamer soccer. Hey, I got something new. Uh-oh. You're going to like it. I know what I like. You'll like this. It's McDonald's new lettuce and tomato special. What's this? Salad? No, it's your lettuce and tomato. It stays crisp because that side stays cool. Oh, that's good. Over here, it stays hot to keep a quarter pound of beef juicy. That's good, too. Put them together, you got a big hamburger like you never had. McDonald's new lettuce and tomato special. It's a good time for the great taste. No one's ever put it together like McDonald's. Along with Bob Burnett and our director, Lou Renoni, Bob Carpenter from the Richfield Coliseum. Hope you're enjoying our action of Steamer Soccer tonight on TV 30 and FM 101. Tony Bellinger battling there against Craig Gallon on the right side board. Ebert comes in to take it away. Ebes sidesteps Hoskovy at midfield. Here comes St. Louis, three on three. Ebert down the slot, shooting wide, rebound. Betancourt cut off by Mepham. Now Armando gets to the ball before the keeper does, but it's cleared away. Out to the left point, Daryl Duran picks up the bouncing ball. Had a chance right there where he should have spread out. Ebert, right side for Bick. Sammy keeping possession. Oh, that angle, centering, in front. Ebert touches it. Can't get it on goal, and it's cleared away. Nice run by Sammy Bick. Left point, Duran. Ebert, top of the circle. Right side, he goes for Bick to spread things out again. This is what the schemers have been doing so well lately. Sammy had nobody open, tried a shot. It was blocked. Bellinger. Left midfield, Duncan McEwen. He turns toward the boards, looking in the corner, centering it. Hoskivy steps it away with Bettencourt lurking in the goal mound. McEwen from the left point, shooting, and Vaccaro goes down to make an easy save. They're doing what they did last week now. Cleveland, they're just laying back in the box when they just come at them. We're going to have to start shooting more from the outside, but also switching fields now. We're just standing around playing one-on-one. -on -one. Allen, left corner for Hoskivy on the counterattack. Ball a crazy hop as it hit the top of the board where it meets the glass. Bellinger forces his way out. Can't get it away from Mepham, though. Murphy right wing. Tony got him from behind. They say play on. Oh. I'm a little surprised on that one. And now Allen called for fouling Pesa, and everybody in the building is going to boo. Who knew that was going to happen? <laughs> well, it's always the guy who does it second that gets called, right? Always. Well, to Tony B in the first quarter. He thought he was foul. He went after him, committed. You know, Bob, that's a very play. important flurry there because instead of the fouls now 3-3, three, three, as Bellinger would have been called, it's now 4-2 for right. Cleveland. So the Steamers got a break from the officials. Left side, McEwen for Walters. Timmy down the slot over the red line. Can't get away from Chapman with help from Bernie James. 
Andy Chapman, left wing, nice stop by McEwen. Chapman again tries it high to the corner. Meppham in front. Draghi heads it over the glass to the crowd. Kick in Cleveland, left wing. 7.15 left in half the time, and it's nothing, nothing from Cleveland. This is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. What are you hurting the most, Jimmy? Name it. Let's straighten up. Yeah, we don't want to disappoint your fans. No. Hey, Jimmy, good run. You had him right from the gate. Your best deserves the best. Two Bud Lights. The less filling light beer with a first name and taste. Hey, Jimmy! Right. Bud Light. A left wing kick in for Cleveland, right where the boards turn toward the goal. Cleveland has eight of the game's 11 shots now. It was 6-2 after the first period. There's the goal. What a shot from the left wing by Mike Sweeney. Innocent looking play, Bob, and he buried that ball to the far post. No chance for Gettemeyer. And he's very dejected, but he can't be. He was screened. He didn't see it. He came, Sweeney coming from his right to his left, hit it with a left foot. Wow. We had three defenders out in front of Eddie. In front of Eddie Gettemeyer, he didn't see it. And the ball had eyes. It just went in that upper right-hand corner. He came from the right to the left, right there. Looked like Don Draghi was... And it could have hurt him. ...was in front of Gettemeyer, and Eddie couldn't see it. Mike Sweeney, what a shot. His 11th of the year at 7.47 in the first of the second quarter. We'll take a timeout. Cleveland by one. This is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. Aren't you on a restricted diet? Yeah. <laughs> Think about how the foods you eat affect your health. Here's some food for thought from Schnucks. There are many delicious foods at Schnucks that are calorie controlled, fat modified, and sodium restricted. Schnucks NutriGuide is a color coded system that helps you find these special foods. It makes shopping for special diets easy. Pick up a copy of NutriGuide and learn more about good nutrition during Nutrition Month at Schnucks. It's gonna get easier. Dave Clemens has called timeout with 7.13 left in the second quarter. Cleveland at 7.47. Sweeney, his 11th of the year from Peter Ward, his 13th assist. And Cleveland leads at 1-0. You won't see many balls from the point placed any better than that, Bob. But you feel the velocity of the ball was slow enough that Gettemeyer would have made the save had he seen the ball, right? Yes, I, I agree. In fact, I thought he was going for the ball. Don Draghi trying to play 120% as he always does. Elongated himself, tried to head it out, and just that moment right there, Eddie relaxed, the ball was by him then, but before he could react again. Gatchatori down the right wing for Walters, and Timmy couldn't poke it home. Jeff intercepts, left side, McDonald, fat angle, he shoots, and he scores! It hit the far post Beautiful. and got over the line. The goal judge, no hesitation in turning on the light, and Ken McDonald, who's played sparingly this year, has his second goal of the year. Bobby's only played 11 games, and the Steamers get a big pickup from their defender, McDonald. I think the ball clearly got over the line. Oh, no doubt about it. From our vantage point, anyway, we're looking right at it. It hit the right post and came on back and crossed that line going to the left post. Kenny McDonald, great left foot. Jeff gave him a good ball in space. Hit the right post, and one and one five definitely was in. So the Steamers at 8.01 counter, only 14 seconds after Cleveland scores. McDonald's second goal of the year. Cacciatore is 10th assist. There is no question the ball did get over the line. The entire ball was over. The goal judge did not hesitate. Kenny McDonald saw the space in front of him and took it, and Jeff Cacciatore laid a great ball off to him, and Kenny hit it first time. Cleveland not that quick. We can still take advantage of all the time. We get a chance to run on him. We ought to run. You know, I'm not sure Ken McDonald's played since the road game at no, Baltimore, and that's when he then. scored his first goal, so he scored two straight games. How about that for Kenny Mack? Out to the point. Draghi, left side for McDonald. He'll crank it again. And it's into the stands. No, it stays in play off Mepham. To the corner. Ebert turning. Oh, what a save for Vaccaro. That ball was in. Don Ebert, great turn hey. to pull it out of the air. How about Kenny McDonald came back down again if I ripped somebody's leg over that left shot again. Dennis Mepham was in front of him. Well, McDonald's always had a great left foot. Oscar, long ball, right wing Bernie James against Schultz. A couple of tough customers here. Bernie can't back in. Out on top, too far for Allen. Craig Allen took a little bit of a strange step there for a moment like he was afraid to stretch his leg out. He's been hampered by injury lately. Gettemeyer, he's been the man of the game for the Steamers tonight so far. 
Schultz in trouble, clips it down the floor, and then after Timmy kicked it, it looked like Craig Allen ran into Tim's leg, which was fully extended from the kick. And Allen went down hard. He's just now getting up at the red line. Marking up is Sammy Bick on him at the top of the slot. Left side for Hoskiddy. Craigie and Duran digging there. Darrell comes away with it. He's dumped from behind. That'll be a foul on Craig Allen. That's number five on Cleveland, Bob Burnett. That was a retaliation foul. Craig Allen still smarting from what he thought was a foul. He took it in the right cheek. But it was not, so consequently he caught the fifth foul on Cleveland. Here's Sammy Bick down the right side, shooting in front. Bettencourt partially fan, heads it across. Nothing doing near side for Kazamani. Against Duran. What's the call? Handball on Cleveland, I believe. If it is, that'll be six fouls. And the steamers will go on the power play. I think Duran got his foot on the ball, Bob. It came up and hit Kazamani in the hand. And that's a two-minute bench right. penalty on Cleveland. Joe Duran, very smart, just stood right there. Let Kazamini come for the ball, and as it did, hit off a Darrell up on his hand. Don Ebert, great effort again tonight up there. He almost had a goal. Acaro, great stop. We're playing well in the back. That goal that Cleveland scored was an outstanding effort. Keith Burpee, a magazine named him as one of Cleveland's most interesting personalities. He will take that personality right to the penalty box to serve the bench penalty for Timo Wachowski. Keith Burpee, a delightful guy, joined us on the radio pregame show in St. Louis last week when the steamers hosted the force. Bucky McEwen in front. Vaccaro drops it. And then... Tumbles to the feet of Ebert, keeping control. Steamers in the power play, Bob. 25 of 104 for 24%. Bernie James in control. In front, ooh, tipped up and over the glass by Sweet. Now, you and I talked about this last week. Cleveland has what we feel are big, slow penalty killers. Benny Dargle, Bernie James, and Dennis Beppham has good speed. And on top, Sweeney. But they're a little slow at the back, and you've got to move the ball quickly against those That's kind of right. guys, right? And do what we've had success on the last few nights is overload to that one side and move that ball. But then the play has to come from the other side. That other wing player are on the back door is going to score the goals. But let the ball work. Duran straight ahead. Not to make you and taken off the ball by Benny Dargo. At yeah, midfield. The ball first to make it work, right? Bob? Dargo pushing it past McEwen and out of lane. Sweeney lurking in the goal mouth. Redmond took it away momentarily. Get him out from piling in there. They whack him. He's on the turf, and it's cleared away. Oh, there's a that, that's gotta be a foul. Finally, Redmond Lane is up, and that Gettemeyer is hurt. Ed had two guys climbing all over him. You know, that'll. I think you and I agree in regard to the officiating in the MISL, Bob. Last night, if you went anywhere near the goalkeeper in the game at the arena, it was a foul. Tonight, two guys come in on him, and maybe this wasn't a foul, but I think we get conditioned to see the goalkeeper get the better of the calls because so many little chippy things are called. They went right over the top of him. It was like a double-team block. Wow. Well, he went to, and he was inside the box. He was just trying to feel the ball. He had no chance. He may have hit his head against that wall. Bill Jennings is tending to the injured goalkeeper. At the half, Minnesota and Baltimore are tied 2-2. That game at Baltimore tonight. And Chicago beat Pittsburgh tonight by a score of 5-3. That is a final. Bobby, they're bringing a physician out, a Cleveland physician. He, Eddie is still down on the, on the carpet there. Starting. Well, for the folks on television, we'll get a good look at it here. Get a mark. I'm sliding out. You see Sweeney backed right into Ed, so the foul should have been look called. Look at the kick right there. Now, then Redmond Lane brings it out. He's fouled there. They don't make the call, and then finally Sweeney whacks him down. So, now watch Sweeney when he comes backing in the first time right there on Ed. That's, you know, he was obstructing the goalkeeper from getting the ball, and that had to be a foul right there. Benny Dargo used both hands and just pushed Eddie Gettemeyer over also. Darrell Duran raising his hand, looking for a call, which never came from Joe Manfra. Dave Clemens has a lot of concern about his goalkeeper at Gettemeyer. That is the D Cleveland team doctor, Dr. Weicker, helping out Bill Jennings, and I think it's time for Slobo to make his appearance, according to Dave Clemens. Eddie really got sandwiched on that board and 
and two of the Cleveland players. And of course, say they each weigh 170, 180 pounds, they both fall on you and up against that board, you know, nothing to give. And that's just a shame because the whistle should have stopped if anything. If he felt it, you know, a drop ball or anything in that area right there, but definitely not let it play on. Slobo just played here a couple of weeks ago in the MISL All-Star game. Concerned right now for Ed Gettemar. Boy, what a shame it would be, Bob. Ed's been waiting for better than a week now to get a chance to get back in there. And the first night he does, he just has a spectacular game, and now he's injured. That would be a bad break. Well, you watch and see what happens from this point on. If the, if the game doesn't tighten up with the officiating, and I think it will, I think it's going to reverse its role, or the steamers are going to try to then start it retaliating, we're going to have another injury. So whatever it's going to take, Dave Clemens complaining, which he should, uh, to straighten this up. Well, we've got a, a big event coming, of which, of course, you're going to be the master of ceremonies. The St. Louis Steamer Booster Club is sponsoring their sixth annual awards banquet on Wednesday, April the 10th at Henry VIII Inn. For reservations, call 532-0671 or pick a reservation form before each game at the Booster Club table at the arena. Mike Sweeney wears a cast on his left arm, somewhat like Tony Bellinger does. And it looked like as Ed Gettemeyer went down, Bob, Sweeney may have gotten him on the head with that cast. I think Ed's, it looks like his lower body's okay. You know, you're always concerned about knees and things like that. It looks like he might have taken some kind of shot to the head. And he, if they take him off in a stretcher, he may have some sort of concussion. Well, I think you have to be very cautious and assume that there might be a, a concussion and hopefully it will not. But when there's any possible neck or head injury, you, you can't be too careful. In fact, I hope they have the right kinds of bill. I see Bill Jennings there, which is great, to make sure that they get him on that stretcher very, very carefully. Both Cleveland players going for the ball. Wasn't intentional, I'm sure, but those things occur, and a whistle should have been blown. Eddie's standing there. He was run over just like he would by a train. You know, you and I always talk about the fact that when the goalkeeper leaves the penalty box, he's a field player. Ed was not outside the box that time. No, he wasn't. He was inside the box trying to field the ball. Dave Clements checking with him. Holding his hand. <clears throat> Dave Clemens is a coach that has a great deal of care for his players. Bill Jennings helping the officials of the Richfield Coliseum. By the way, that is a Denver Avalanche sweater that Dave is wearing from his former days in the MISL, but take heart, it's covered, the logo is, by a St. Louis Steamers <laughs> button for St. Patrick's Day. But certainly right now, the concern focusing on Ed Gettemeyer. Tim Walters played with Dave, of course, in Denver. He brought now up they'll warm up Slobo. You brought up a good point, Bob, about Dave Clements. Might be a number of coaches that going into a ball game tonight, tonight knowing how important it was, perhaps might take a chance with a Tony Glavin or a Ricky Davis. But uh, coach is going to make sure that their career possibly is not charting. They can keep it as long as possible. And I know both of them would love to be here right tonight. But they're home rooting, and uh, we're going to use them later on this week. But the good point, Coach Clemens can take one game at a time. He's not going to ruin someone's career to try and win one ball game. He's got enough out there to do it anyway, what he has. Ed Gettemeyer leaving at the 10:34 mark in the second period made seven saves and giving up one goal. McEwen on the power play shoots it high. Steamers have 50 seconds left in the power play. McEwen switching it left side for Redmond Lane. Bernie James will get there and he'll clear it down the floor. They're forcing out on top. Cleveland is now, so we can play it on the high post if we get the chance that Donnie can show himself good timing and then come off of that. Cleveland, one of the worst penalty killing teams in the league. There's another foul, and that's number eight. One more foul, they'll get another penalty. Cleveland's given up 27 goals in 64 attempts. They only kill 58% of the penalties against them. Pesa at the right point from Redmond Lane. Diego setting up, 25 seconds left in the power play. Duran, left side for Redmond, lays it around the board. Ebert looking to head it up to the glass, over the glass. It'll be a kick in for Cleveland. That first pass to the side to Redmond Lane has to be a good pass, a firm pass, something he can run onto, 
That was not. Redmond tried to play it off the off the glass. So Donnie got a little too high. We don't have to be in a hurry. Their two up players are forcing. Again, we're open in the middle. Or if we beat one of the up players, then we've got it on the side. The back door looks very good. We, but we have to move a little bit quicker. Cleveland on the kick in. Benny Dargle. Ellinger a header in midfield. He and Mepham couldn't get tall enough. Ball went over both of them. Ellinger near side for Duran. Sammy Bick. Left boards Tony B. He's got McEwen open right wing. Here's Ebert. He's got Duncan still. Taken away from him by, by from behind by Benny Dargo. Don Ebert knocked off the ball. Dargo clears. And the penalty is over. Slobo out to get it. Bear in mind, though, Cleveland has eight fouls. Bellinger, left boards, ridden off the ball by Furphy and Sweeney. Here's Dargo back the other way. Left side for Furphy. Steamers are playing with only two fouls, so they can be aggressive. Furphy, weak shot, testing Slobo right away. Easy save for the St. Louis goalkeeper. I don't think Cleveland has that burner out there that they can get that quick counter and he can run away from us. So we can take some chances with our people in the back and get in on the attack. Slobo held that ball too long, and Furphy almost took it away from him, and then Bellinger intercepts back to the goalkeeper. Right side throw for Tim Walters. Timmy over the red line of Cleveland's got Ebert to his right. Donnie back to Tim in front. Catch a Torius shot, and it hit either Mepham or Walters who were crossing in front of the goal. Walters is down, boy, and that's foul number nine. And that'll be another St. Louis power play with 2.28 left in the half. Good aggressive work on the boards by Tim Walters. Cleveland knows they have eight fouls. They've got Timmy Walters on a board. On the board is back to the goal. The defender comes up and just hooks his feet when he could just hold him there, make him play away from the goal. Came into it. They were asking for the ninth foul. The coach does now. We've got enough out there. We're going to have to find the formula against this team. Cleveland, they changed their tactics a little bit over what they did last week. Now they've got their two up front men chasing, so we have to do something a little bit different. Diego Pace is ready. He hit a bomb last night. Maybe he can put us up two to one. No scoring in the first quarter. Mike Sweeney for Cleveland, 747 of this period. And then only 14 seconds later, Ken McDonald, the second of the year from Jeff Cacciatore. Crowd is chanting, we want a ref. They play Mike Sweeney up on top, and he's fairly quick. He's the one that's doing the chasing. But Daryl Duran, if he can beat him, boy, he can go in on goal because he's got the back spread out pretty good. Redmond Lane on the free kick. Left point Duran, right point Peso. Diego in trouble from Sweeney. Gives it back to Duran. Darrell to his left, shooting, blocked into the crowd off the knee of Bernie James. Kick in left wing, St. Louis. Darrell Duran, Mike Sweeney having a few words. Darrell Duran thought that Sweeney was knocking down after the shot. Diego Peso coming over to him. Be cool, Ala. Keep your cool. Redmond laid on top for Diego. He gets it back from Duran, tees it up. He lets it fly. Couldn't hit the glass. Got into the crowd. And somebody upstairs took a hard shot, courtesy of Diego Pesa. You better keep alert when you're sitting behind the goal when Diego Pesa and guys like that are shooting. Johnny Ebert is open on, on the right side. Redman Lane on the left side. Diego Pesa right at that defender, then laid off the down because they're not covering him. Then we can perhaps switch fields, go across the other side. Now a timeout called by who? Cleveland. I think Cleveland because Timo Lukowski is the first coach to step out of there. A young lady has been taken upstairs. I think she took the brunt of that pace of shot and probably jarred some of that makeup loose. Oh boy, I guess. So here we are with 2.11 left in the first half. A 1-1 game. Bob, are you surprised at the low score? Not so much from the standpoint of Cleveland not scoring because we did a good job against them last week, had them 6-1 until they came on, and we're just playing well defensively, not only with our defenders, but all five out there getting in behind the ball. Uh, of course, you break up our offensive attack that we were used to in scoring a lot of goals. Yes, from our standpoint, I'm not surprised either. Uh, it's difficult to get something flowing going like that. Duncan McEwen not working with Jeff and Redmond of late and then coming in there, and there's, there's just a, a few tactics that have to change. It may break open. It may break open before the half or second. Certainly the third or fourth quarter. You saw what Cleveland did last week. Well, we've been on the air for an hour already. Normally, we're about halfway through halftime by now, but we've had a lot of injury. 
And again, a reminder, the Steamers will be home next Friday night against the Minnesota Strikers. The first 5,000 kids through the gates, age 16 and under, will receive a free mini soccer ball from McDonald's. Boy, one thing we want to be sure of, that we do not get scored on, shorthanded goal. At best, if we go on a half tied up, quite an accomplishment. But don't let them score, especially since we're on the power play. Back on the fence, Sammy Bick, Mike Sweeney giving the Steamers all kinds of problems. Bick holding it, now Cleveland will drop back. They're playing kind of a 1-2-1 one, one defense with Sweeney out on the point. And then Mepham and Dargo, and then James, the deep man, sweeping in front of the goal. Sammy Bick leaves, Redmond Lane is on. Now see, there's a bad ball from Duran, and that gives up possession. you got to make those easy passes on the power play. Darrell ahead for Redmond. Set the ball up now. Let's get ready. They're, they're forcing us out on top. boy. Get some penetration. Duncan McEwen, left side for Redmond Lane. Red at the left point. Ebert deep on the left corner. Duran. There's another bad ball. Not by Darrell. This time by Red. On the near boards. Pesa picks it up. Now we've only got 50 seconds left in the power play. Diego. Duran. Back to Pesa, right point. Nepham on him. In the corner, McEwen. Looks like the Steamers missed Ricky Davis a little on the power play, Bob, especially unable to overload one side like they have been with Ricky at that right point. Left point, Redmond Lane. In the corner for Duncan. On top, Duran tees it up. Shoots it just wide. Carroll did a good job of keeping that shot low. It just wasn't on goal. Very simple now. Let's just play it to one side in the corner. He either gets the shot or bring it out to the middle. Let Darrell shoot. There's a giveaway by Pesa to Mepham. Sweeney back to Mepham. Slobo out. He knocked it straight up very nicely to keep it in play. The penalty will be over in four seconds. And another foul on Cleveland, Mike Sweeney. With 32 seconds remaining, Don Ebert says, why'd you blow the whistle? I had possession. Right side, Ebert in the corner from Pesa. Uh-oh. Somebody took a run at Ebert, Mike Sweeney, him down. Mike Sweeney's having a picnic tonight. He was all over at it. Get him on. He hit Pesa. He hit, just hit Ebert. Now Slobo puts it over three lines. You know, Bob, with 20 seconds left, they've got 11 fouls, but only 10 of them are on the scoreboard. It should be 11, and with 20 seconds left, if they were to get another foul, that mistake on the scoreboard could cost the Steamers. Right side, Allen hands it right to Bick. Sammy on the boards. Trip from behind. Play on. Greg Allen shooting, and a block by Duran. Maybe the best thing is to get to the locker room and forget about all these fouls. Dangerous play on Cleveland. Now, see, here's where this comes into play, Bob. They've committed three fouls right. since they had nine. In fact, our players are really complaining that should be and 12. They only put two of them on the scoreboard. And Don Ebert wants to know why there's only 11 fouls on the scoreboard. We've got a third official in there. He's got to keep House in there. He's got to check that out. The league's got to do something about this. They failed to post a foul. That's going to cost the Steamers two minutes. If you're going to have the rule, do it right. That's halftime, and we're 1-1. Boy, oh boy. Well, I tell you, many times we criticize the officiating on the floor. That's bad officiating from the penalty box. We played 30 minutes in Cleveland. It's a 1-1 game, and from the Richfield Coliseum, this is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. And you folks with us here on KDNL TV 30, stay tuned. Coming up next, Jim Duff and tonight's Budweiser Sports Break. J.C. was the nicest little boy, so quiet and shy. He always respected authority and never said anything bad about anyone. What a gentleman. Why, even the neighbors talk about what an influence my J.C. was. I mean, look what a great influence he's been on that Hewlett kid. J.C.'s a delight, but I do wish he'd learn to joke more and say what he thinks. <laughs> Sometimes Ma don't remember so good. <laughs> I'm J.C. And I'm that Hewlett kid. The Morning Zoo. On KC95. She didn't mean it, John. The Transformers. Intergalactic robots battling to free the universe from the forces of evil. Transformers. More than meets the eye. Autobots wage their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons. Transformers. Share the adventure with the Transformers every Sunday morning at 9.30, right here on Channel 30. 
There are three reasons why you should call Sanford Brown Business College now. One, Sanford Brown graduates get jobs. Two, Sanford Brown graduates get jobs with real futures. Three, Sanford Brown graduates get their jobs without investing four years and a fortune. Get on the fast track to careers in computers, accounting, electronics, secretarial, business management. Call Sanford Brown Business College, 822-7100. Looking for an incredible deal on a really good late model car? The price is right at Ackerman Buick, Highway 270 and New Halls Ferry Road. Choose from over 50 GM executive driven Olds, Buicks, Chevys, Cadillacs, plus vans, jimmies, and Suburbans. 83 Chevrolet pickup, $59.95. 77 Ford Granada, $21.95. Ackerman Buick, the warehouse of executive driven GM cars. Highway 270 and New Halls Ferry Road, where the price is always right. It's Sports Break with Jim Duff. Good evening. Welcome to Sports Break. We're at halftime of the Steamer Cleveland game. Let's update that score for you. At half right now, Steamers in Cleveland are tied one all. Kenny McDonald has a St. Louis goal. All right, other games around the MISL this evening. Here they are Chicago beat Pittsburgh 5 3. Minnesota Baltimore tied 2 all at the half. A couple of late games for you. Wichita, Las Vegas, no score. Los Angeles, Tacoma play later on tonight. The St. Louis Blues are playing the Hartford Whalers at the arena this evening. Let's check that score for you. Near the end of the first period, Hartford nothing, St. Louis nothing. By the way, Mike Liute is not in goal for Hartford this evening. The baseball Cardinals won their first spring game of the season. The Cards beat the New York Mets 2-0. Willie McGee and Terry Pendleton both tripled and scored for the Redbirds. While the baseball season is just getting underway, it's coming to an end in college basketball. The NCAA basketball title pursuit continued its feverish pace today. Eight more games played throughout the country with the survivors advancing to the Sweet 16. The tournament favorite, the Georgetown Hoyas, had no trouble with Temple University. Junior guard Michael Jackson led the way with 14 points. Three other Hoyas had double figures. The final, Georgetown 63, Temple 46. Okay, we are going to take a short break right here, but when we come back, you'll see how the steamers work almost as hard off the field as they do on it. And that'll be coming your way right after you see this. for the crew restoring America's pride in liberty. Just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Supper time! No, it's overtime. So I got us something new. It's McDonald's new lettuce and tomato special. How come I only got half? That's your hot half. That's where you keep your quarter pound of beef. Why am I keeping it there? Because you got a cool half that keeps your lettuce and tomato crisp. You put them together, you got a meal you could only make at home. You have time to cook? McDonald's new lettuce and tomato special. It's a good time for the great day. No one's ever put it together like McDonald's. How can so many car dealers all offer such low prices? At Lindenbush, we feel you deserve to know the reasons we do offer lower prices. First, we own our facility. It's paid for. Next, our staff is small but efficient. Last, we intend to be a high-volume dealer, and we'll do it by offering prices like $10,999 for this fully equipped 1985 Mercury Cougar. Shop around, then come to the dealer who can justify low prices. Lindenbush, Lincoln, Mercury, Maricor, South Kings Highway, just south of Filer. Now that I know that the cost of tuition isn't going to sideline my college plans, I can really enjoy my last year of high school. Introducing the new GI Bill and the new Army College Fund. If you qualify, you can sign up now, join in July, and earn over $25,000 for college while you serve America. Be all that you can be. Find out more about the new GI Bill and the new Army College Fund from your Army recruit. Find your future in the Army. Welcome back. 
The game of indoor soccer is still a relatively new sport, and teams must work hard to sell the game to fans. Now, for the Steamers, that's an ongoing campaign, and one that's proving to be very successful. Fernando Pesa, Pesa's got it. Pesa, Cacciatore, a little bit wide, Pesa, goal! In the world of indoor soccer and professional sports, you get paid to perform, and that means doing whatever it takes to make sure your team comes out on top. But on the St. Louis Steamers, the job doesn't end when the players walk off the field. The Steamers' Ricky Davis and Jeff Cacciatore are having a good time with this young fan at Mary Queen of Peace Grade School in Webster Groves. But at the same time, they're also selling the game of indoor soccer to the hundreds of potential fans gathered at the school's gymnasium on this day. The same holds true for players like Ty Kehoe and Sam Bick mingling with a room full of children this past Christmas at Shriners Hospital, or Redmond Lane and Slobo Lievsky, handing out awards to a gathering of young soccer players at St. John Bosco School in West County. You see, while the Steamers have a game plan on the field, they also have one off it. Specifically, it means getting out and meeting the public, selling the game of indoor soccer. The Steamers' philosophy is basically uh, that uh, player appearances are very, very important, uh, especially for uh, indoor soccer, considering that, uh, you know, let's face it, it is a relatively new, new sport. Uh, we're not established like baseball and football and even hockey, so uh, we, we have to get out there into the community and make contact with the people, uh, especially the kids and, and the families, because uh, they are our fans. <laughs> Steamer fans rank among the best in the major indoor soccer league. Almost two million have come to the arena since the team first opened its doors in 1979. But when you're the new kid on the block, you have to keep doing things to get noticed. And in the Steamer's case, that means getting out into the community, making appearances, promoting not only goodwill, but also yourself and the game of indoor soccer. This club does that as well as any in professional sports. This year, under the new uh, ownership of Tom Bowers, uh, appearances have just exploded. Uh, they've virtually tripled. And uh, on an average day, I will get 35 to 40 phone calls per day. Now, now obviously, all, all of those are not uh, asking for player appearances, but uh, I'd say two-thirds, maybe three-fourths of them are. If you put an applause meter or whatever you guys call it, out on the field, it was the guys who were making the most appearances. They might not be the most talented, but the guys who were making the most appearances the applause meter went up when they were introduced. No kidding. And now we're finding uh, that uh, uh, as our introductions are done, there, there's starting to be a little bit more of an even keel in the applause meter because of the fact that all the guys are going out and meeting the public. The steamer appearance campaign is well organized. The team keeps track of where each player goes and how often. Each of the team's 22 players are asked to make two appearances a month. For the most part, they don't get paid a dime compensation comes from knowing you're helping someone and helping your sport. It's important for us to get out in the community and uh, especially uh, the hospitals and the people that really need to see us, you know, they don't see too many other people so it's good for us to get out there and it gives us a lot of satisfaction. Uh, we, we're just like them, you know, we're, no, we're nothing different, nothing special, we're just ordinary people like them and, and I think that's important that when we do go to these appearances that we make them feel comfortable and make them realize like there's no differences, you know, mm -hmm. and that we can sit and talk and have a good time. you got to give back to the community what they give to you. They make us, you know, our money that we make. They don't turn up we don't have a product to put on the field so you've got to go back and give to the community and I think you know this club tries very hard to do that. If I know I've done some good it makes me feel really good and especially maybe helping kids and talking to kids and things and if I feel as if I've gotten through to them in some things it makes me feel really good. One small touch to the, to the head or, or uh, shake your hand and that, uh, that kind of stuff uh, they're gonna they're going to feel good all day. It's not just uh, all day, probably for a, 
for a month. They're in the stands or you see them on the streets or something and they remember you and they come, remember me last year? Yeah, I think I think I remember you, but it's amazing. I mean, it's something that stays with them and uh, and that makes it worth. You know, your one hour, two hours is well worth it because they still remember you. They remember everything you did, everything you talked about. If you signed an autograph, they still have it and uh, that's the best part. I think kids are the main part of it and if, you, if the kids like you and you get close with the kids, they're going to come out to the games and the both sides benefit. So it's, it's something that has to be done and I think we do it as well as any team in the league. But let's remember what we're trying to do here. Jeff and I are working on our passing. The only difference between what we were doing by ourselves is that now we have somebody trying to take the ball, so we have to move a little bit. We have to get open for each other so we can go ahead and keep the passes going back and forth. Jason, this is your second chance, all right? This is it. This is your chance. What the St. Louis Steamers are doing is simple, selling the game of indoor soccer to the community. But in the process, something else is taking place here. With each autograph, each hello, each handshake, the steamers and their fans are developing a special bond. And in the process... game. Bobby, I'm wondering if you've had a chance to get any further update on the condition of Ed Gettemeyer. Bob, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Jim. All right, we're wondering if you've had a chance to get any further word on Ed Gettemeyer's condition. Yeah, we just got word. By the way, I'll explain the hat in just a minute. We got an update that Ed Gettemeyer simply got his bell rung. No concussion. He is okay. But they're going to put him in the clinic overnight for observation, which is a safeguard procedure. So evidently, Steady Eddie will be okay. But he got his bell rung, and they're going to keep him in overnight just to have a look at him. Now, we're tied 1-1 at the half. Let's look at some of our first half highlights with the first goal by Cleveland and then the second one by the St. Louis Steamers. And it was an innocent enough looking kick in by the Cleveland Ball Club in the second quarter of play when they got the ball into Mike Sweeney who got the goal and up to this time it was a pretty even defensive game. This is Peter Ward on the kick in. This is at 747 of the second quarter and he buries the ball, Mike Sweeney does, into the upper right hand corner of the screen of the goal and Cleveland takes a 1-0 lead. Then good work here by the Steamers. Jeff Cacciatore over on the left side for Ken McDonald. And Kenny Mack runs onto it, places it nicely to the far post. As you can see, the ball clearly gets over the goal line. They storm the goal judge, but he turned on the red light, and the Steamers tied 1-1. That's where we're at. The reason I wore this hat is because Bob Burnett has this this Bud's for you Budweiser hat. The lights are shining, and he'd like to wish you all Saint, a happy St. Patty's Day. This is Bob Nick Burnett. For all my Irish friends back in you know St. Louis, St. Column Kills, Denny Long, Bob Kehoe, all those Irishmen. Happy St. Patrick's Day. All right, that's Bob Burnett. I'm Bob Carpenter. A tip of the Irish cap to you here at halftime. It's 1-1, Jimmy, and we'll send it back to you and hope for some more goals coming up in the second half. We have a feeling that this thing is going to explode into some more physical play and a lot of goals in the second half. Okay, guys, thank you very much. That's going to do it for sports break this evening. By the way, our next... cars. They're not foreign to me. I'm your local man from Meineke. Meineke discount mufflers stock a large inventory of foreign car mufflers. And they're Everlast mufflers. But we have the know-how to install them quickly because we're trained exhaust system specialists. You drive a foreign car? Come see me, your local man from Meineke, for know-how and quality. And you'll love the price. Installed from 1893. Visit your local independently owned Meineke shop today. Before you let some clown sell you his chicken nuggets, try ours, Church's Crispy Nuggets. In case you haven't noticed, that other guy has only one flavor. But Church's has two, regular and spicy. Both are light and crispy on the outside, tender on the inside. And Church's Crispy Nuggets come with a choice of four delicious sauces. So why settle for a one-flavor nugget when you can have regular or spicy? 
Remember, any clown can make a nugget, but only churches gives you a choice. Don't miss the action, don't miss the excitement. The St. Louis Steamers, you'll like what you see. For ticket information, call 781-4030. They said we'd never make it, but we did. We bought our winery back from the big corporation. And the colony wine you'll say is outstanding. Wine that goes up against Palmasson, Almond, you name them. Have we succeeded? Tell us what you think. Try our wine. And write to us here at Colony, Asti, California. We'll answer every letter. Colony is ours. But the most important opinion is yours. Well, there's the culprit so far here tonight. The Steamers had 12 fouls in the first, rather second period against Cleveland. But the man you're looking at only counted 11 of them. And that's why the Steamers do not have another power play in progress as we start the second half. Steamers have outshot Cleveland now, 16-15. Seven saves for Gettemeyer, one for Slobo, and six for Vaccaro. We're underway. Steamers going from right to left. John Ebert in the slot. Armando Hoskovy back to the goalkeeper, Vaccaro. Minnesota now at Baltimore tied 3-3 after three. That Minnesota team's been playing some pretty good soccer lately. Got a good ball club. I'm glad we had the center off. We got the ball first. Got into the ball game. Now just playing tough right here. Oscovy in the corner. Cleared away by Daryl Duran. Notice again, Bob, their two defenders staying back, not getting into the offensive flow. Of course, when we clear the ball out, they're, sta they're standing right there and pick it up and come right back in. And so if we get a chance, we intercept. If we can, play it back to the keeper and build it up unless we've got someone breaking. Try and get that quick counter. Up a man for Carl. Ball ball right side, Cosimini. He's got it away from Bellinger. Tony defending there. Right point, Ebert helping out. The left point it goes for Kai Hoskin. Betting court on him. Hoskin turns it down the slot. In front, Allen. He hit it wide. And that's two chances Craig Allen's had tonight to score goals, and he's missed on both. Ty Hoskins is so dangerous, not necessarily only with the ball, but he can play the ball off very, very well. So the guys away from the ball have to be very careful. Hoskins goes down to play on, says the official. We'll have to talk to Herb Silva next time we see him at the arena. Ask him about what kind of backup system they have to make sure those fouls are counted correctly if they do. Left wing, Hoskovy to the corner, looking to center. Bellinger cut it off. Out top, a shot, and it's high and wide over the glass. Off the foot of Bernie James. St. Louis goal kick, a minute 43 into the third quarter. You can see last night's game starting to show up on the steamers. They're not as fluid as they were, and of course, it's a, been a physical first half, so we're going to have to change lines quicker and get more of a rest and maybe even overlap some, someone out there and keep them out for two line changes to get make sure we're fresh that fourth quarter. I saw Armando Betancourt coming back. Couldn't stay with his man. He's off there now. We've got someone in. So if they're tired, you know, they shouldn't play him. Slobo and Drake on the goal kick. Steamers started out the year as a tremendous third quarter team. They've outscored their opponents now by five goals, but there was a time when they had outscored their opponents by about 15 in the third quarter. What a great run by Walters, but he shot it high and wide. Out to midfield, McDonald. Back to Slobo. He's got Drake to his left. Donald has it. Far side, Duncan McEwen. Right side for Pesa in the corner. Diego has Walter setting up in front. Pumps it to the point for McDonald. And Diego was given a hard rod on the boards by Keith Furphy. And Pesa is hurt. I think Diego got the air knocked out of him, Bob. He's clutching at his stomach. I think, he, I think he's gasping for air. We'll check on his injury and be back in a moment. 1-1. Things are physical tonight. This is St. Louis Steamers soccer. Give me a light. Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Uh, give me a light. 
Uh, Bud Light. Hold this, will you? So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light! Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Strike. <laughs> Bob, I think Diego got the air knocked out of him on a collision near the boards. Furphy seemingly kind of had his hand hit Diego right in the stomach. You ever have that happen to you? Oh, yeah. Terrible thing. That's why Diego was writhing on the ground. Terrible. He was gasping for air. McDonald plays it in around the boards, and then Sweeney gets it back to the goalkeeper, Vaccaro. Timmy Walt is looking very good tonight. He's got to play him more now. He's fresh, running quick, and he's got some good chances on goal. Andy Chapman from Furphy. Return passes behind Keith in the right way. Back to the point for Chapman. Around the boards, Drake defending. Ball rolls through. They're going to get Drake for a foul this time. Standing ovation for the officials. One foul on each team. That's how they scored their first goal on that restart, playing the ball out from about the same position, although it was on the left wing. Dargle shoots. Chapman tried to back heel it to the net. Now, Walters picks it up off the boards and leaves it back for Redmond Lane. He goes right side for our Duncan McEwen. Top of the circle, Walters. Timmy tried to first time it to McDonald. Kenny Mack was already too deep to receive that ball. And Andy Chapman on the far boards. Somebody take him on. That's really not Chapman's game out there. No. His game is inside the box receiving the ball. That's where he goes right now with Peter Ward in possession. Good steal. Greg Kennedy. Near side, Don Draghi. Davis, by the way, is not here because of a pull of a muscle at the very top of his left leg. Dave thought if he played tonight and pulled that thing even more, then he might be hurting even more for the last couple of weeks. That's a handball on Andy Chapman. And I think Tony Glavin pretty much just a precautionary measure. And Dave likes the way Greg Kennedy runs around and creates problems for the other team, so he thought Greg would be a nice compliment to the team here tonight. Last time Greg Kennedy played, play, played a very strong game. Got good speed, he's forceful, and he can shoot. Almost had an assist on the first shift he played last month in... Look at that ball. New York, or rather, Pittsburgh. Out on top, right wing. Cacciatore at the point, on the boards against Ward. He jitterbugs it back to midfield for Sammy Bick. We're almost four minutes into the third quarter. Sammy down the slot. Right side, catch it, Tory with it. Jeff has Bick in the corner, plays it on top for Kennedy. Greg, left side, Redmond Lane, he shoots! Oh, what a save by Vaccaro. Boy, did that ball have some velocity. And Sammy Bick a foul in the right corner. What a shot by Redmond, Bob. It was not spinning at all, it was a knuckler. He got all of it. What a save by Vaccaro. Oh, he hit that ball. Good play by Greg Kennedy, laid the ball off to him. Moving that ball better now. Now Furphy beating Bick. Right side, Chapman's in front waiting. Sammy recovers the steal. Look out, Kennedy gave it back to Slobo. Too close, in front, rebound, and Cacciatore clears it away. At midfield, Redmond Lane trying to push it past Mepham. Furphy into the crowd, kick in, near side St. Louis. We're 431 into the third quarter, still tied 1-1. This is St. Louis Steamer soccer. Schnooks invites you to save half on tickets to the dazzling opening night performance of the 1985 Ice Capades, Tuesday, March 26th at the arena. Bring the kids to enjoy the snark cartoon characters. Come see 1984 Olympic and four-time world champion Scott Hamilton, 1984 Olympic silver medalist Kitty and Peter Carruthers, performing March 26th through March 31st at the arena. Pick up discount ticket vouchers for Schnooks Family Night at Schnooks, the friendliest stores in town. Which are you gonna... <laughs> Third quarter action. 1-1 one, one the score. Bob Carpenter along with Bob Burnett. And our director slash producer, Lou Renoni here. Andy Davenport coordinating television for us back home. Bill Connerly, the radio broadcast. And another kick-in for St. Louis on the near side. Each team has two fouls here in the first five minutes of the third quarter. Out to midfield, Bellinger. Ball knocked away by Ali Kazamani. Back to Slobo, as Sammy Bick picked it up. Armando Betancourt pulls down the long kick with his chest. Armando, Hoskivy on him from behind, gave him trouble, then Bernie James stood him up at the red line and took it away. Right side, Allen, Slobo out of his goal. Oh, he takes a hit from Allen. Can you believe the way they're letting him oh, play tonight? Man, look over the top of him. Boy, I tell you, inconsistent officiating, folks. Nepham. Left side for James. 
I already have one goalkeeper in the hospital. Let's not get another one. Kazamati the midfield. Met from left side for James. Off the boards. Pick. Oh, they're going to get Allen. Now, see, Allen runs over the keeper. No call. That time, he tries to go for a 50-50 ball with Sammy Bick, and they get him. Three fouls on Cleveland. Sammy at midfield. Almost gave it away and then got it back and cleared it. Kazamani, left side after a touch from Mepham. Left side, Hauskavi at the point. Kai Hauskavi in, kicked out by Bellinger. Pick on the near boards, lays it up the field for the streaking Ebert, but Bernie James stopped him. Mepham, left side in the corner for Hauskavi. Back to the net. He's always dangerous. Sammy let him turn, didn't commit himself, and then knocked it away. Ahead to Armando. Bad ball for Kazamani. Inside, Allen from Hoskovy shooting. Bick knocked it away. Well, we're fighting the bullet. We've got to get the ball out there. Right side, James. Bernie chesting it down, shooting it in, and it's kicked out of there by Ebert. Boy, Armando's got to look for an open teammate. As soon as he gets possession in the defensive zone, you try to turn the ball in near your own box in this league, and they're going to clean your clock. Well, that, that's right. That's not the place to try and duke somebody. Bernie James, long ball. Left wing for Allen. Walters on him. To his left, and a shot. Good block by Tim. On the far boards, Duran picks it up. Walters streaking down the right wing. Darrell spins it to him. In front of the Cleveland bench. Walters, left side for Bellinger on the boards. We're 640 into the third quarter. Tony ahead to Peso, rejected by Craig Allen. McEwen and far boards, gets it back for McDonald. Duncan, long ball left wing, intercepted, but Nepham fell down and gave it left side anyway to Peter Ward. Allen, down the slot, good play by Tony Bellinger. Slobo finds Walters up the left wing, releases him with a pass. Gargle defending as Timmy crosses the red line of Cleveland. To his left, weak shot, easy save by Chris Vaccaro. He played it, uh, Timmy had to go to his left and play it off his left foot, and he didn't have enough juice on it. Cleveland starting to take a few more chances in coming forward. They're trying to counter. We can counter right with them, and we're going to catch them one of these times, two on one or three on two, and go in. Here it is here. Loose ball, right side, Pesa in on goal. He shot it wide. Diego had a chance to move in, but he was at a bad angle, so he figured he'd go ahead and shoot. I don't know. I guess he didn't know where if there was a defender right on him or not, but he certainly could have walked in a lot closer. In front, Chapman, look out. Furphy to his right, and a shot. It's straight up in the air. Who's going to get it? McDonald clears, and now Draghi does the same. Sweeney a shot. Kiss it goodbye upstairs. Goal kick St. Louis. 1-1 to score. Third quarter action. This is St. Louis Steamer soccer. No, it's overtime. So I got us something new. It's McDonald's new lettuce and tomato special. How come I only got half? That's your hot half. That's where you keep your quarter pound of beef. Why am I keeping it there? Because you got a cool half that keeps your lettuce and tomato crisp. You put them together, you got a meal you could only make at home. You have time to cook? McDonald's new lettuce and tomato special. It's a good time for the great day. No one's ever put it together like McDonald's. Richfield Coliseum. We're a little surprised the score is 1 1 at this point. Bob, you and I were talking on radio at halftime. We both feel like we're sitting on a powder keg here, that this thing may explode into a scoring spree sometime soon. You may have to issue shoulder pads and helmets. Our whistles. Draghi back to Slobo. Long throw left wing. Off the board. Sweeney back to get it. Murphy. Nice ball. Ahead to Peter Ward. He's one-on-one -on -one with Tim Schultz. Tricky little guy, this Ward. Cuts it inside. Gets away from Redmond Lane. Shoots! Slobo, good save. And Schultz puts it to the crowd near side. That Peter Ward's a tricky little midfielder, and Slobo did well, Bob, to see that ball through traffic. He's been a thorn in our sides all year. He hurt us last Saturday night in St. Louis. We've got to watch him, and he's fresh. Andy Chapman had a good game that night in his Cleveland debut with two goals and two assists. Sweeney, long ball, right side. Slobo, a diving header to clear. Redmond Lane on the near boards. He's cut off there by Ward. Looking back in the midfield. Cacciatore, ooh, just cut down hard by Benny Gargo. That'll be four fouls on Cleveland. They're taking no prisoners tonight, playing it tough at home. And sometimes foolish because there again. Well, you don't want to see fouls in midfield, no. Bob, when you're in a tight ball game. Look at Cacciatore, he bounced away, but Dargle stopped him. Now Furphy holds off Jeff. 
Right side, interception, Schultz ahead for Redmond, who leaves it for Tim coming down the left side. Cargill on him from behind. Schultz turns it inside. Can't get it to catch it, Torrey. Sweeney with a play. In the corner, catch it, Torrey, in front of Sweeney. Cargill knocks it out. To the point, Tim Schultz. All the way back to Slobo. His trouble. He volleyed it out of there. Murphy keeps it in bounds with a high ball. Header by Sweeney. Dragey clears with a header. Schultz knocks it down for Cacciatore. Jeff trying to release Kennedy. Taking it away. Murphy. Left wing. Shooting. Oh, what a save by Slobo. Diving headlong and high to his left. Corner kick Cleveland. Slobo is back, folks. Boy, they applaud that. That is a shot. He extended his body, made sure he got both hands on the ball, and just pushed it by him. You have to be an athlete to be an indoor soccer goalkeeper. Perpy can really cream that ball. Slobo extending himself and up. That's the stuff highlight films are made of right there. Slobo spelling Ed Gettemeyer. Again, in case you were out of the room at halftime, Ed Gettemeyer got his bell rung, evidently okay, but they're going to keep him in the clinic here in Cleveland overnight for observation. That's good news. Oscovy looking to center. Ebert knocked it down. Easy pickup for Slobo. That's good marking up on the dead ball situation. Slobo puts it straight in the air. And it'll go into the crowd. You know, have you seen a delay of game penalty called all year for anybody putting no, it into I the haven't. crowd? No, I haven't. And I, I'm glad that they don't. It feels small enough. I must have, you know, you're a we're putting Slobo in the trick bag. We're playing those balls back when he can't pick them up. He's got to feel them. And the guy's coming all over. We have to be, be careful on him. Azamani on top for Mepham. Ahead for Allen. Looking to volley. Looking to turn. Bellinger knocks it away. James in the corner. Nice ball for Hoskovy. Cross the goal mouth. Oh, a shot high and wide from Bernie James. I'll tell you, Allen posting up in there puts a lot of pressure on your defense. Left point, Azamani. On top for Mepham. Could be a good deal. Here's when they get tough. When they, when they have you spread out and they play that single post out there. James in the corner for Allen. Right point, Kai Hoskins. That point, Nepo. Oh, into the red box of Slobo, who is right there to make the save. Armando Betancourt, that's his man. He's going he's gonna to have to find him now. We're going to match up. Everybody's working out there. James ahead to Cosimini. Allen, top of the circle. A shot just wide. Boy, did he turn that ball quickly. Betancourt, right side for Ebert. Ebes looking to switch it near side for Bellinger off the foot of Cosimini into the crowd. 420 left. Steamers kick in. We're still tied. 1-1. They're pressuring us in our third. We can break that press. Now we start playing that ball a little deep. Get somebody breaking as soon as we win the ball. If they have to break from the other side and play and win a few balls deep, play it over the top, that'll keep them clean. But as long as we're trying to play that sharp ball in our third and getting more and more in trouble, they can keep pressuring us. Gonna have to lay the ball out once in a while. You can't always build it up like that. They're in there, play it up over the top, get them one on one. Left side, Tony Bellinger. Long ball, left wing. Pesa. Diego runs onto it, shooting bat angle in front. Vaccaro got the bounce he needed, and he throws it left wing for the streaking Furphy. Shooting, it's high and wide to the left. That ball took about five seconds to go 200 feet. Chapman, top of the circle, Bellinger in front of Furphy, knocks it away, and they're shoving at each other, and somebody's going to get a penalty. I think both of them are, Bob. After the ball was cleared, they both took a shove at each other, and Bellinger and Furphy will both go into the box. Keith Furphy, he didn't like it that Bellinger stepped in front of him and won the ball, but that's what a defender has to do. He's not going to sit back there and let you feel the ball when you're inside your box so you can turn or play back and somebody shoot on it coming on, so he stepped in front. Furphy didn't like it. He shoved, and Tony shoved back. That's the way it goes. You're going to have to protect your territory out there. 11 4 Furphy for Cleveland. Bellinger for St. Louis, both into the cooler for unsportsmanlike conduct. That's the first St. Louis penalty of the night. Well, Tony's going to stand his ground always, I'll tell you. Well, we got a second here. The people back in St. Louis, it's just so important you realize that these steamers played so very well last night, Wednesday night, and they're out here giving it all tonight. Boy, they're really playing hard. And it'd be 1-1 here against Cleveland as a tribute to them. We had a crowd of over 11,000 at the arena last night, and I was personally surprised to not see it be a whole lot more or so. Come and join us Friday night when the steamers, who are playing very well, take on Minnesota. 
They need your support down the stretch. They've got a big crowd here tonight, Ike. What do you think, 15, 16,000? Well, the building holds 17, 217. I'd say maybe two or 3,000 empty seats around, so probably 14 plus. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, the only problem is getting here. <laughs> Our bus driver took a different route, then he missed the exit. Then we had to turn around on an interstate, which is illegal. Well, we didn't get pulled over, but we made it in time. When, they, when, when that sign said you can buy your Canadian fishing license next stop, I knew <laughs> we were in trouble. <laughs> Long throw, slow ball. Left wing for Lane in the corner. Digging there is Sammy Bick. Sammy Bick, long ball right side. And Luke, Ken McDonald back to slow ball. Bob Burnett obviously forgetting that our director, Lou Renoni, is Canadian. He can shut off your <laughs> microphone at any time, big guy. Well, so here it is. Duran on top. Redmond Lane. And on goal. Vaccaro a save. Duran can't get the rebound. Oh, Redmond almost made it 2-1. Well, that's Chris Vaccaro. He robbed Redmond twice tonight. Ward gets it back from Chapman. Good defense by the Steelers. Here they come. Duran. Vic 2-on-2. Two two. Each team a man short. A lot of space out there. Look out, Daryl, from behind. Peter Ward just took it away from you. Nobody told him. Nobody talking. That's right. Midfield, Mepham in the middle for Hoskivy. 55 seconds left in the penalties to Bellinger and Furphy. 2.45 left in the third quarter. Tense defensive struggle and very physical. Now... Play on. Oh, they said play on. James and McDonald both went down. Right side, here comes Duncan McEwen. A pass from Betancourt. Armando running to the goal. Duncan can't get through traffic. In the left corner against Big Dennis Mepham. Back to the keeper, Vaccaro. I thought that was a good call. They both went for the ball. They played the ball and had collision. Both on blind side. Neither saw one another coming on. Mepham ahead for Allen. Schultze on his back. And a man open left side. It's Bernie James. They never saw him. Betancourt took it away. And a foul on Craig Allen for knocking down Tim Schultz. That's number five on Cleveland, Bob. One more, and the Seamers will have another power play. Craig Allen trying to dupe two of our players. He thought he was fouled, no call. So when he lost the ball, he went, he went after our player. Dave Clemens. Irish temper up a little bit here in the third period. Tomorrow's a fun day, but right now it's business. Good thing we've got a week off. Well, Here's Armando. Murphy and Bellinger out of the box. Bencourt, right side, McEwen. Shooting. Oh, in front. Draggy deflected it just high off the glass. Duncan a return shot over the glass. Goal kick. Ooh, Don Draggy in ever so close. Couldn't get that ball down. We had a good combination there. Three on two. And Bettencourt gave the ball off just the way he should. Coming straight down the middle. Gave it off. McEwen running on it. Hit a good ball. Nice cross by Duncan. Yes. That was a hard ball to handle. John Draghi right there. And even though he was in tight, you know, to handle it with that velocity and try and keep it down. It's just tough. That's a bang-bang play. If it goes in, you look great. Look at here. We got a good call. I didn't think it was a con. Huh. I didn't either. That's all right. Well, no comment. Take it. Let's score on it. Duran, left corner. Out on top, Niego, left footer, blocked by Cosimani. Ebert to his right, gets a shot, scores! Don Ebert, left post, right off the post, along the turf. And Eves, one of the men we featured in our pregame show, gets number 28. What a shot with the right foot by Don Ebert. Beautiful. We had a good combination going. Of course, they were expecting Donnie to go to his left. He took it and went to his right, played the ball back. Niego Pesa, who can really cream a ball, goes over to Don Ebert, and he fakes right. Cuts it, hits that good far post. You see where Timmy Walters was right in front of Vaccaro, and I'm sure he screened him. He did not see the ball, and all of a sudden was by him on the right side. Another thing, Bob, 141, Cleveland has five fouls. Diego gets the assist, his eighth of the year. 13-19, Steamers lead 2-1, first time they've led in the game. Now Peter Ward right into the chest of Bellinger. 130 left. Tony B on the far boards. Knocked down from behind. Play on. Pesa steals. Nice lead on. Here's Bellinger. Tony in the corner for Diego. Walters in front. Pesa had to hit it first time to get it to him and didn't know he was there. Over the top. Left side, Walters. That was a big goal. Bellinger back to Walters in the corner. Timmy centers. Ooh, it hit a defender and almost went in. 
They'll call Payson for a dangerous play. Diego was off his feet. You watch and see now. They've got five fouls. See if they get the sixth foul on because they've really hammered in there twice. I thought that sixth foul could be called, but officials may be afraid to call it. One minute left, third quarter. Let's just hang in here. Let's go in that fourth quarter up by one. Cleveland's only had the lead in the game for 14 seconds. That's how long it took McDonald to equalize after Sweeney put the force on top, one nothing in the second quarter. 40 seconds left. Dargle, top of the circle. Far Ward, weak shot, easy save, Slobo. But we've got great goaltending tonight, Bob. Beautiful. For both Ed Gettemeyer and Slobo. Look at that move by Pesa. He back heeled it to himself. Breakaway, Walters is shot wide. Oh, Timmy just missed by about two feet to the right post. Oh, that a been a big goal. What a, that was a wonder move by Peso on the boards. He back heeled it off the boards to himself. Murphy in the corner. Chapman centering over the glass. It may have been touched by Schultz. Corner kick, I think. Bob, you know the steamers had a break on that corner kick called the other end. They made it pay, didn't they? They certainly did. Well, it looks like this breaks. one's a goal kick. 13 seconds left. Let's get the ball right here. Maybe be fouled with two seconds to go and then get, get into that power play situation. What a competitor. Don Eber. He's a holler guy, boy. He gets him going. And he shows by example a lot of times. He can really fire it up. He was leading the protest when the bus driver couldn't find the <laughs> arena. He wanted to get here and play. That's the end of the third quarter with Slobo holding control. Steamers get the only goal of the period. Ebert from Pesa, a minute 41 remaining. And the Steamers lead with 15 minutes to go by a 2-1 score. This is St. Louis Steamers soccer. This bud's to everyone who tackles the changes and challenges of that new promotion. This bud's for you. There's no one else. Just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, yeah, 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 yeah. for you. George Stevenson tried out for the Dallas Cowboys, but chose farming instead. Dennis Day turns his corn into fuel and dreams of a more prosperous agriculture and a less energy-dependent U.S. Montana governor and rancher Ted Schwinden wants you to know why agriculture is so important to your economic future. Meet all three on American Dreams, Three Faces of Farming. Sunday, 10 p.m. South County Dotson is celebrating our grand opening. And we've got Dotsons all over the place. Like this 300ZX for $14,999 on the floor, or Sentras and 200SXs on the walls, or trucks and stanzas on the ceiling. Maybe you'd like this Nissan Sentra. It's only $54,99. But with prices this low, our cars won't be hanging around long. So drop in today to South County Dotson. Times change. Remember money in the bank? It meant stability, security. But then my old bank had so many new names and different owners, I wondered who's running my bank anyway. It's different now. I belong to Anheuser-Busch Employees Credit Union. I know who's in charge. People like me. It's dependable. Always been run by and for its members. That's the intelligent difference. Who's running your bank? <laughs> take a 2-1 lead in the third quarter, Bob. Diego Pesa's hard shot got a rebound for Don Ebert. He did the rest. You can't place it any better, Joe. And again, Timmy Walters moved right in front of the keeper, and I'm sure Chris Vaccaro did not see it. You see, they pack it in. Cleveland gets inside that box. That was a good play on our part. Diego Pesa got it all with left foot. Donnie, who usually goes left, went right. Get the ball. Nice shot. Cut it back. Look, Timmy Walters right there. Yep. We had Daryl Duran on that far post, too. We were set up very well. In the third quarters, Cleveland outshot St. Louis 7-6. Shots are even 22 apiece after three. Five saves for Slobo, three for Vaccaro. Slobo now has six. Gettemeyer had seven. 13 total saves for the St. Louis goalkeepers. And nine for Chris Vaccaro. Team 
Timo Lukowski. Some of the folks here don't like it. A Timo Buster sign showing up. On the other side, it said, get smart, Bart. Fire Timo. That talks about Bert Wolstein, of course, the Cleveland owner. 16,161 here tonight. I would assume those are tickets sold and not actual attendance. Bob, there's an awful lot of people up in those luxury boxes. Luxury boxes are feature boxes or what have you. The steamers going to the right. Ball taken away. Cleveland has control. Long throw for Vaccaro. Left way. House could be taken off the ball by Duran. It'll be a kick in for Cleveland. position right there. I thought Hoskabee kicked the ball out, but I guess not. Duran must have caught it. They had a quick restart. They may change a little bit. Release right away. If they think the keeper has the ball, they're going to release and try the long pass on it. So we have to be careful, but we can run with them. Everybody has to work out there. On top, Hoskabee is shot high and wide. James, the rebound, and on goal, and Slobo punched it away. So here comes Cleveland again, huh? Hoskabee is shot. Bettencourt blocks it. Coach, I'll make you a deal. If I keep my voice, we're going to win this game. Okay, I'll buy that. <laughs> Are those Cleveland Indians? Well, that's the baseball team. They will kick it in. We've got to get out of this pattern now. Cleveland coming at us. We can't get the ball out of the box. We keep kicking it out or right back at them. It's going to pay off. they got Hoskabee playing inside, and he's dangerous, not only scoring, but laying that ball off. Left point, Mepham in the corner. Hoskovy shooting it in. Rebound, Kazamani shot it wide. James a rebound, and Sammy Bick got that one. Back to midfield, Craig Allen. There right to Duran. Carroll, left side for Bettencourt. Here come the Steamers, two on two. Ebert leading the way down the left wing. Armando just dribbles into heavy traffic. Keeps the ball with his good strength, though, and gives it off for Duran. Right side at the point, Sammy Bick. Shooting it in, Kazamani stopped it. Dick forcing his way in, looking to turn. Still with it. Tried to center for Ebert, knocked away at the last moment. Betancourt, top of the circle. Can't get a shot. Get rid of it, Armando. He's fouled. Craig Allen on the foul. First foul on Cleveland in the period. Armando was sort of out of that mode last night, and he was laying the ball off and then running into space, and it was creating some good combinations. But for every reason tonight, he's holding that ball. Ken McDonald has shot off the restart. Draghi just stepped on and headed the ball down the floor. Back in his own red line, Kazamani. Betancourt leaves. Walters is on. Chapman can't receive it left wing. McDonald clears. Kazamani against Duran on the boards. Arrow comes away with it. Good 50-50 work. Left side, Timmy Walters. Walters over the red line. He's been playing well tonight. Timmy to his left. Shooting. Ebert can't get it in. And it's knocked away at the last moment by James. Good run, Timmy Walters. Oh, he's giving it all, boy. He's really playing hard. Getting back on defense. Good runs on offense. Hey, Timmy wants his job back. That's right. He's been a hungry player, not playing much the last few weeks. Left from right point for Furphy. Left point, Dargle and Allen. We need the next goal, Bob. Make it 3-1. Here's where it's tough, right? with Chapman. In the corner. I'd rather see him in the corner than on top of the circle. Right. Left point, Dargle. Shooting, Timmy Walters there again. Craig Allen playing on that right side. He's going to get in on that post. Ooh, Draghi looked like he was trying to avoid the foul. They called it anyway as he got a little piece of Chapman with the ball going by. There's one of those little chippy calls we talked about earlier. Keith Perpy, he'll probably line up to the left side, see who's going to be the quarterback. Somebody's going to have to go to the ball as soon as the rotation is made now. They're going to drop it off to their... Sweeney for Furphy. Ooh, he hit it just high. Rebound, Allen. And Bellinger blocked it. Steamers are doing an unbelievable job of blocking shots tonight. Walters ahead for Pesa. One touch and a shot. And a good block by Benny Dargo. Steamers will kick it in. We'll take a timeout. 12-21 left. St. Louis leads it 2-1. This is St. Louis Steamers soccer. This Bud's for everyone who scrapes it, sprays it, and lays it on smooth. This Bud's for you, for all you do, the king of beers is coming through. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. 
buds for you. The crowd during the time I was chanting, we want Lou. Louie Nanchoff has not appeared on the floor tonight. Cacciatore. No, that was not Lou Renoni they were chanting for. It is Schultz on top. Kennedy for Redmond Lane. Oh, I think Greg should have taken that shot. On top, Bellinger, and Furphy blocked it in front. Cacciatore, left corner. Sweeney on him. Furphy helps out. Is Greg Kennedy getting baptism of fire right now. Kennedy has shot, blocked from a bad angle. Furphy lays it down for his keeper, Vaccaro. Cacciatore felt like he was in a tag team mismatch in the corner there. Schultz kicks it up in the air at the red line. Dargo heading it straight up, headed down. Peter Ward, right side for Furphy. Furphy into the slot, looking for a shot. He's got to get all the way over to the left wing to really get his shot. Redmond Lane forces him over there. Bellinger stands up his man. He'll be called for a foul on Peter Ward. That's five on his. No, I'm sorry, Bob. That's, That's two. Two on St. Louis. Okay. Cleveland has one. Steamers have not been in foul trouble today. Boy, they're doing a good job sealing off those lanes. They're staying in behind that ball on goal side. Just keep it up. Furphy to Ward. Out on top for Sweeney. Feisty little guy. Cacciatore with a steal after help from Redmond Lane. Bellinger almost tripped up. Clears, but not out. Ward, left point in the slot. Sweeney turning. Kennedy knocked him down. Crowd's That'll be another foul. Right outside the box. I thought sure that crowd was going to influence those officials or intimidate them. I thought the card was going to come out on that. Here again. Furphy looking to bury one from about 20 feet away. Sweeney shoots. It deflects off Redmond Lane wide to the right wing corner. Peter Ward on top. Steamers have to be careful not to get too many fouls in a short time here. Andy Chapman on the near boards for Furphy. Cacciatore stands him up and forces him back to the point. Good job by the little guy from the hill. Sweeney, long ball, left wing in the corner. Cacciatore beats Furphy. Furphy gets it back and a shot. What a save by Slobo. He stood his ground on that near post, Mr. D. He sure did, boy, and he can handle that ball. That ball was hit point blank at him. He knocks it down, cushions it, picks it up right away. Look out here. Here's Furphy. Long ball, left wing from Vaccaro. Shooting, Slobo punching it away. It was too hard to catch, so he punched it out. Vic clears to the crowd. Kick in near side. 10-34 remaining. Cleveland on the attack, but the Steamers have the lead. This is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. If you've been dreaming of catching a part of the St. Louis Steamers action, don't be left in the fog. Schnooks can make your dream come true. Register today at Schnooks to be an honorary ball boy or girl at one of the Steamers home games. To enter, write in 25 words or less why you'd like to see the Steamers in action. If selected, you'll receive four tickets to a game, a souvenir soccer ball, a photo taken with your favorite player, and more. Catch the thrill of Steamers soccer. Register today at Schnooks, the friendliest stores in town. Cleveland kick in, left side. We've got 10.34 remaining. Out on top for Craig Allen. He plays it right wing corner. Ball eludes Hoskivy, and Sammy Bick leaves it back there for Slobo. And a boy, Slobo, now we need some help. He played a chart. We're going to have to come back and help. That a baby. Ken McDonald, left wing for Ebert. To the corner, Bettencourt. Armando cut off. Good tough play by Bertie James. Vaccaro, long throw up the left wing for Hoskivy. Duran helping out. Hoskivy strong along those boards. Harold digging. Somebody gets called. Who is it? St. Louis. That's four fouls on the steamers now. James, right side for Allen. Dick a good steal. Armando clearing, but not out. Now it hits a clean one. Armando goes to midfield. Bencourt beaten to the ball by Kazamani. He's tired. He will leave, and Walters is on. Timmy looks like he can run all night. Hoskivy out on top. James left side for Meppel. Dumps it in for Hoskivy. He lost control. McDonald cut him off, but Hoskivy still got the shot away. Daryl Duran inside his own red line. He's got to hold for a little support here. Oh, my goodness. He went down. No call. Daryl Bob should have pulled that ball back, though. That never right. should have even happened. He had one man downfield, Don Ebert, and nobody else against four defenders. They center it. There's Timmy Walters again with a steal. Slobo, long throw, right wing. Oh, tough Sammy break, Vick huh? streaking and hit him right in the back. And he was cut down by Bernie James. A foul against St. Louis. 
They're calling everything now. Halfway Chapman, it's a mad scramble toward the goal. Andy shoots it high and wide. Far boards, Pesa in the middle for Waters. Steamers have five fouls now. Only one on Cleveland. Waters, left point for Draghi. Right boards, McEwen. Steamers moving it slowly. Back to midfield for Bellinger. Inside for Diego. Pesa. Tried to center to Bellinger, who was pushing through. Their clearance to midfield, intercepted by Draghi. Back to Slobo. On the near boards for Duncan. He boots it right down the boards. Nice ball for Tim Walters. He's got Pesa and Bellinger to his left, three on three. Timmy in the middle, looking for a shot. On goal! Oh. Bellinger set a screen and almost snuck in. But Carroll made the save. Great screen, though, Bob, by Tony Bellinger. He went right through. He spread his legs, let it go right through. I don't know how Vaccaro got it, I don't know. Boy, Timmy. Timmy Walters doing a great job. Great Kennedy on now. Furphy up the left wing. 7.55 remaining. Furphy shooting. Bellinger stepped in front of it. Benny Darkle in midfield. Pesa on him. He dumps it. Left wing corner. Draghi knocks it away from Chapman. Kick in Cleveland. Left wing down deep. All night long, our forwards can come back and help our defenders double back. Their defenders are not moving forward. And we're going to need help in the back. Jeff Cacciatore, Redmond Lane. Boy, I'll tell you, we get a ball here in release. We're liable to go in on them one-on-one, -on -one, especially with Redmond Lane out there. They pack them in there, Cleveland offensively, too. Big factor in the fourth quarter right now, the foul situation. Steamers one away from giving the force a power play. Should they get that sixth foul? You think the fuller keeper also? I think it depends on when it happens. Hey, Griggs, pretty quick. Kennedy, long run down the left wing after the steamers intercepted the free kick. Kennedy in the corner, has a man at the point. Look at him jitterbug along oh, the board. Quick. Dave Clemens won a death from Greg tonight in place of Tony Glavin. Redmond Lane, top of the slot. Deflected shot. Vaccaro grabs the spinning ball and holds on. Left side, he goes for Ward. Cacciatore running. No, yep, Jeff Mantell on the other side of the field made the call. The official right behind the play did not. Cleveland gets a power play, Mr. B. Okay. Well, we'll see what they do. There's 7-16 left in the ball game. I would think they might even try to pull that keeper also. At least to try and tie that ball game up. Beamers on top by one, but Cleveland with a chance to equalize. Back with more in a moment. This is St. Louis Steamer soccer. Hey, I got something new. Uh-oh. You're going to like it. I know what I like. You'll like this. It's McDonald's new lettuce and tomato special. What's this? Salad? No, it's your lettuce and tomato. It stays crisp because that side stays cool. Oh, that's good. Over here, it stays hot to keep a quarter pound of beef juicy. That's good, too. Put them together, you got a big hamburger like you never had. McDonald's new lettuce and tomato special. It's a good time for the great taste. No one's ever put it together like McDonald's. Timmy Walters has played a heck of a game tonight. He's serving the bench penalty. Left side, Furphy. In the corner, Hoskivy. Furphy shoots. It's just wide. Chapman on top. Kazamani shooting. He hit the go post. Hit the go post. Furphy in the corner. Hoskivy centers. And it's kicked out by Draghi. I thought that ball is going to get through for Craig Allen. Cleveland, a great power play team. They've really got the steamers packed yeah, in. Do. Another shot by Furphy goes high. Kazamani shooting. Oh! Another block by Draghi, and it goes all the way to midfield. We've got to get somebody out and challenge him right here. Don't let him get in so tight. Tim Schultz is the up man. I might got to chase out in front. Make him work. Murphy in the corner for Hoskivy. They're overloading that one side. Out on top, Cosimini. Next Jeff time we win the ball, Bob, we maybe have to substitute on top. Get Jeff or Redmond out there. They really has some speed now. Oscar V for Furphy. Look out. Sammy Bick reaching out. I was afraid he was going to deflect that ball on goal. Yeah. It was going well wide. Chapman back to the point for Cosimini. 50 seconds left in the power play. Key Coming. point in the game. Cosimini into the corner. In front. Look out. Oscar V shot it wide on a header. A back across the goal mouth. Slobo the save. Beautiful. Set up. up. Baby Slobo. I thought I thought Hoskin was going to yeah. put that head ball away, Bob, but he couldn't get it on goal. 
We got to get his fresh troops out there, Bob. 30 seconds remaining. Mazzamini down the slot, left side for B. One touch and two. Dellinger forces him. Another one hits the goal post. Get it up. Greggy clears it. Now Donald's going to get it. Ooh, he's, he's got, got a chance. He's got Schultz to his left. Passes it. Timmy runs on to it. Ten seconds left in the penalty. Hold possession now, Tim Schultz. He's got Draghi in front. Finally, they get it away as Furphy and Schultz go down. And Keith Furphy's going to get two minutes, Bob. I was watching him all the way. Tim Schultz was on the turf, and Furphy kicked him in the head. I the did. official saw it. I didn't see that. I was looking downfield because I knew Timmy Schultz went down, and I was hoping then we could get back in time to pick up because we're one man short anyway. I didn't see the play. Boy, I Timmy was, Schultz is tough. I was he watching it all the way. They got up shoving, and then Tim Schultz fell down. Furphy kicked him right in the head. We'll see if the camera stays with it long enough after the ball's cleared away. I don't know. Now, there's where they have a little tough stuff, and when they started getting up, Furphy gave Tim a kick in the head, Bob, and we saw it all the way. Timmy Schultz, a tough kid, and you know, if he, he's down there too long. Oh boy. 9.43 the time of that one. Steamer penalty is over in one second. Took at five minutes and 17 seconds to go in this ball game. What a ball game. What a defensive ball game the Steamers have played. Boy, to fight them, fight back there being sharp. Cleveland, a great team power play situation. Next Friday. Here's where Keith Burpee kicked Tim Schultz in the head. You couldn't see Timmy on that shot, but Burpee, as he ran away, gave him a little nudge with the boot right to the head, and that'll cost him two minutes in the sin bin. On Friday, March 22nd, the Steamers take on the Minnesota Strikers. And McDonald restaurants will give away mini soccer balls to the first 5,000 children 16 and under. That's Friday, March 22nd. Thank you, sir. Quite welcome. Okay, Robert, 517. We're on a power play. Let's hold that ball. Let's score. At least make sure they don't. Then it's down to three. Duran, left wing free kick. Darrell inside for Ebert. No, on top. Redmond Lane a shot. It was blocked on the way in. Walters is out of the penalty box, so the Steamers are on the power play. Timmy's looking to get off. He'll be replaced by Duncan McEwen. Mesa, left side for Redmond Lane. They're letting that guy out in front intimidate him. Uh, intimidate them. They've got to get the ball into the corners. They're giving us the corners. Now, we're worried about that guy chasing. Intercepted. Benny Dargo. Mike Sweeney. Long shot. I'll tell you, Slobo's got to be ready for that. That was in. Slobo has got to be ready for that. When he steps over the red line, he's got to get back in his goal crease. That ball almost went in from long range. That would have been a shocker. That would have looked like the one that Per Ronfett scored against the Steamers in the playoffs two years ago in Wichita. Pesa on the far boards for Lane. Steamers having trouble putting more than a pass or two together. One minute left in the power play, 4.15 in the game. Ebert for Pesa. Bernie James back to the goalkeeper for Carroll. Donnie Ebert playing. The ball's got it. When it goes to Donnie Ebert, the ball's got to go all the way across to the other side. What they're doing is cutting off half the field. They're just forcing four players and just cutting it right off. We've got to get the ball to the other side quickly. But first of all, don't be intimidated by those defenders up on top. Ebert standing down. On either side, all alone, wide open. We've got to play the ball down in the corner. Get them back on the deep side. Cleveland's had four penalties tonight. Steamers do not have a power play goal yet. Duran for Pesa. Diego holding it. Knocked off the ball. Mepham, good interception. Redmond Lane gets it back from Duran. Excuse me. Switches it near side for McEwen. 3.45 left of the game. There it is. Long ball. Right side for Ebert. In front, Pesa. Eves for McEwen. It's wide to the left corner. Redman Lane has shot to flex straight up off Benny Dargo. Duran heads it back in with a nice ball. Dargo heads it out. Sweeney pulls it down. Penalty over in 10 seconds. Sweeney from Mepham. Pick it up defensively. Steamers now. They're, you know, you're down a little bit now, but pick it up. That's okay. 
We're still up two to one. They have to catch us. 3-10 remaining. The Carroll long ball. Dargo and Slobo picks it up. What a great ball to Benny Dargo. Slobo boots it down the floor. Under three minutes remaining. Murphy. Ahead for Oscovy holding his ground. Murphy a shot wide. Duran picks it up and Darrell clears it down. Murphy just knocked Timmy Walters down going away too. Okay, let's don't worry about Timmy. Keep your cool. Come on, we're ahead 2-1. Stay on. Joe Raduca on for the first time. Also on. Michelle Kaham for the first time. He scored against the Steamers last week. Hoskavy is up as a goal. They move Hoskavy inside whenever they get themselves in trouble, and that's what they did there. Hoskavy tipped the ball, got the inside track on Kenny McDonald, faced Slobo, had no choice, put the ball all the way across. Bob, I think this ball hit Ken McDonald on the way in. I think so, too. Kenny let him get the inside. Hoskovy big and strong, and he just turned in on it. See, the ball hit McDonald and deflected right to Craig Allen. If that ball hadn't hit Kenny's foot, it would have gone harmlessly to the left wing boards. Hoskovy turned to the inside. He got the inside. You're right. I think it hit Kenny's left foot and yeah. went in. Because Tony B was goal side on Craig Allen on the other side. They're giving the goal to Craig Allen. I don't even know if he touched it. I think he did. Well, a deflection probably got made the ball get away from Tony Bellinger, right yep. to Craig Allen. Unlucky for Ken no, McDonald. Boy. Okay. Dave Clemens wants a timeout. He has to. Good call. Good call, coach. Settle him down now. 223 momentum with Cleveland. Fans up all over the place. Cleveland coming back finally with 223 to go. We got to get something going. Boy, it would have been great get that third goal on the power play situation but boy they really cut us off Bob if the steamers don't win this game tonight the power play will be the culprit four penalties on Cleveland no goals definitely uh, have to attribute it to their defensive marking when they're playing short hand and aggressive marking they gave us the backside we just couldn't get the ball there and when we did they recovered quick enough and we couldn't make the the square pass or the diagonal pass of someone coming from the back. Vaccaro made some great saves, too. No better than our two keepers tonight, though. What's Dave Clement saying? He's talking defense, getting in behind the ball. He's looking at Redmond Lane, some of these others. He may be talking about quick counters if they, if they show. Overloading to one side, and he gave it that sweeping motion, like if they're picking you up tight, let's play it up over the top and try and get somebody one-on-one. -on -one. 2.23 remaining. I was a little surprised to see Timo Lukowski not pull his goalie. And they tied it up while yeah. even in personnel. Boy, Hoskabe, boy, he is just tough inside. Of course, he's tough everywhere. But, boy, when he gets in there on that post with his back to the goal, he can sure handle that ball and wheel and deal with it. Good vision, sees those open men. Steelers kick it off, Drake left wing for Betancourt. Armando cranks and Vaccaro makes a save. Oscar V on the near boards against Ken McDonald. And back to the goalkeeper. Long throw, right wing, Allen. Drake stands him up, good play by Don. Murphy, ball bouncing high on the boards. Two minutes remaining, we're tied 2-2. See where they're playing Hoskabee again on that post. McDonald took it away. Left point, Bernie James. Allen can't get it. Slobo waits for it. He has it. No. Long throw up the middle in the air. Out of the way by Mepham. Duran chesting it, then heading it to keep control. Hoskabee gets it back. Betancourt helping out. He can't get it. Murphy, 125 remaining. There's Jakey with a steal. Ebert will get it back to Slobo probably. We've got, we've got to get Tony B in there. Timmy Walters in there now. But one minute to go. Our ball. We've got to get those speedsters in there. Sammy Bick. 
Lobo with his feet outside his own box. Got to make a play pretty soon. Jeff Mantell's counting away the time. Come on, let's move the ball, Slobo. Now he brings it outside the box again. Don't want to put it over three lines. 50 seconds remaining. He releases McDonald right side. Ken McDonald shooting the Vaccaro to say. And he was trying to shoot on goal. I thought he was going to try and hit the glass. We had some guys camped in there. Allen long ball. Slobo punches it away. On the near board, Sammy Bick. Back to the keeper. 25 seconds remaining. Slobo off the boards. A long throw for Daryl Duran. He's got a pick to his left. McDonald. Hit it, Kenny. On goal and Vaccaro the save. Oh, what a shot by McDonald. To the point, Bick misfires. Five seconds left. Four, three, two, one. Murphy can't get a shot. I think the shot was late. It makes no difference. We're heading for overtime. Well, I didn't see that green light go on. I was watching Furphy. Boy, I don't know. That ball would have been in. I wonder if they'd have counted it. Kenny, Mc Kenny McDonald almost won it for St. Louis. They played a great game, Bobby, regardless of what happens in this overtime. See if he got the shot away in time as we look at the replay with the clock rolling. I didn't think he did. It's over. Ooh. Yeah, it was pretty close. After 60 minutes of play, it's 2-2. Overtime coming up from Cleveland. This is St. Louis Steamer Soccer. Give me a light. One light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you get. Good light! So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Good. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Oh, so it's your turn to cook, huh, Dad? Yes, indeed. Who said that? I did. Take a minute to think about the nutritional value of the foods you eat. Here's some food for thought from Schnucks. Try the fish. It's an excellent source of protein that's high in vitamins and minerals. Yeah? And it's easy to cook. Try the fresh sole from Schnucks Seafood Shop. Karen picked it up today. Learn more about good nutrition when you take the nutrition quiz at Schnucks. Hey, honey, how about some lemon sole a la Jeffrey? There are three reasons why you should call Sanford Brown Business College now. One, Sanford Brown graduates get jobs. Two, Sanford Brown graduates get jobs with real futures. Three, Sanford Brown graduates get their jobs without investing four years and a fortune. Get on the fast track to careers in computers, accounting, electronics, secretarial, business management. Call Sanford Brown Business College, 822-7100. They said we'd never make it, but we did. We bought our winery back from the big corporation and make colony wine you'll say is outstanding. Wine that goes up against Palmasson, Almondon, you name them. Have we succeeded? Tell us what you think. Try our wine. And write to us here at Colony, Asti, California. We'll answer every letter. Colony is ours, but the most important opinion is yours. In the fourth quarter, Cleveland outshot St. Louis 11-9, 33-31 for four quarters, four saves for each keeper. Slobo has 10, Gettemeyer had seven, but Carroll has 13 for Cleveland. Here we go, 15 minutes, sudden death. Bob, we're gonna have to match up right here. They've got their top three scorers up on top. We've gotta have our top three defenders back. You know, it's amazing. Louis Nanchoff has not played tonight. You mentioned that. He scored a total of 44 points on 26 goals and 18 assists. I don't know if he's injured. He is dressed. His brother George there. has just retired. They're both from the Cleveland area. Off the kickoff, Murphy, long ball, pick into the crowd. Kick in. Bob, a lot of goals in overtime are scored in the very first minute. Why? I can't Do you have any idea? That. No, I don't. You know, unless. <laughs> One team's more red than the other, but I don't know. I don't think that's a good idea. I don't know. Seamers are two, three I don't in like overtime. Cleveland is six and three. 
They've been overtime now 10 times this year. Oscovy for Furphy. High and wide to the left. Mepham over the glass. Goal kick. Last team or overtime game, February 6th at Pittsburgh, a 5-4 loss. Cleveland, March 3rd at Wichita, a 5-4 loss. Thank you to our statistician, Tom Maddox. See how long they keep Oscovy and Furphy and Craig Allen in there. I'd keep them in there the entire time. That's their top three scores. And they've got some Bernie James and is that Dennis Mepham back there. They've got their top five players there. Slobo gets over the red line, plays a long ball, right wing. Vaccaro grabs it. Got to keep that ball away from the keeper so he can grab it with his hands. Oscovy, great ball, left wing for Furphy. In the corner, Duran marking up. Sammy Vick marking up on Oscovy, near side and front rebound, and Allen couldn't reach it. Here comes Betancourt. Steamers three on two. Vick left, so is Ebert. Armando hands it right to Oscovy. In Armando's defense, nobody was really that open. Furphy against McEwen, to his left. Gotta watch this guy on the wing. Mepham, shot, Slobo, save. Allen, in front, Mepham, oh, another beautiful. save. Unbelievable, Slobo. Holy cow. Brother, is he Irish? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Slobo is a Yugoslavian Irishman with the spirit of St. Patrick's Day with that save. Now, Bellinger up the right wing, can't get it, back to the goalkeeper. That was the save of the game, Bob, two of them in a row. Somebody's got to cover for Tony. They switch, good. Sammy Bicks on Hoskabee, that's a good match up there. Azamani, hands it right to Draghi. Near side, Tim Schultz, check it, Duncan McEwen. Taken away by James. They're gonna get Duncan for a foul. Keep your head, Duncan, don't get two minutes. He was screaming at their referee, Joe Manfra. Overtime. Now Chapman is on. Sweeney. Azamani at their own red line. Walters and McEwen marking up. Head for Peter Ward. He's the midfielder and the playmaker on this line. They've got Andy Chapman in there now. Single post. And he's good. He played that way at Wichita. And they're going to play off of him. Ken McDonald's marking up. Chapman. Right wing for Dargle. Long ball left wing. Ward centers in front. Oh, Slobo again. Andy Chapman, a full volley, and Slobo had the answer. Corner kick, Cleveland. He is unconscious in goal. Wow. This is a miracle save here. Andy Chapman on the go. Cranks it with that left foot. Great indoor soccer, too, by Cleveland, Bob. Oh, boy. Using that glass. That's right. Beautiful piece of soccer, offense and defense. There's the man. He wants to win this one for Ed Gedemeyer. We've got to get out of here now. It's a tough play. We play this is where games are won or lost, right here on these restarts. Everybody matching up, but they're going to have to move and get up tight. They center it, ball over the top of everybody. McDonald cuts off Chapman. Kenny Mack clears it, but not out. Ward, top of the circle, just wide. Slobo may have gotten a piece of it. He did. Carol Duran standing on it. Against Targo in midfield. Azamani, right wing, has an angle. In front, Chapman can't get a shot. Ebert just got there in time to get him from behind. Andy was off balance. Duran, dangerous pass across the field. McDonald has it. Kenny Mack ahead to catch it. Torrey, he lost it. On the boards, Draghi pops it up nicely to keep it in play. Boy, we're hanging in there. What a game. Darko, left side for Kazamini. Top of the slot, left side for Ward. In front, Chapman can't turn. Bellinger stopped him. Off the chest of Ward, Tony B back to Slobo. Boy, this Cleveland team is dangerous. And you see how sure they are defensively? They had two men back. Now, we've got Redmond Lane. He's fresh. can not quite get the ball. And they're pressuring up on top. Sometimes you can't run away from the ball. You have to come back, support from the front, so to speak, get the ball, and then go off of that. And they're pressuring us in our third. Our forwards are running away from us. We're going to have to stay more compact. We're too strung out now. Get, and if it's not there, look in the middle or play it all the way back to Slobo. But 
This is sudden death. One mistake and it's all over with. Kick in for Cleveland, right wing. After Tony Bellinger put it out of play. Murphy ahead, can't get it back. Pippen man was Craig Allen. Oscovy, catch it, Torrey took it away after a touch by the Cleveland team captain. Bernie James on the far boards for Allen. He cuts it inside. Kennedy cuts him off. Greg looking to clear. Can't. Now Bick does. Catch it, Torrey has Redmond Lane ahead. Can't get it over Bernie James. He puts it high in the air. Bick a header. Oscovy almost got it on goal, and Sammy stripped it. Here's Catch it, Torrey. He's got Kennedy to his left. He's got Sammy Bick right oh, side. Beautiful. Great pass. In front, Redmond Lane. Sammy looking for him in the corner now. Back on top to Bick. Catch it, Torrey. Against Allen. Shooting! Blocked by Furphy. The keeper was going the wrong way. In front, Kennedy looking to get it for Lane. Couldn't do it. Bernie James just flattened Greg Kennedy right in front of the official. Come on, get back. Greg Allen, long ball, right corner. Bellinger a touch. Slobo out of his net. Doesn't know where the ball is. Hoskinby finds it. Centers. Net from the shot. Wide rebound. slobo has got it. Teamer's lucky that time. Slobo went out, took a chance, but you see our defenders get back and cover for him, and he went down and got up very quickly, and he got into that goal. Nick Hewitt ahead for Betancourt. Armando shooting! Yes! Oh, baby! Armando Betancourt in overtime. He hasn't had the greatest of games tonight, but he does now. McEwen on the assist. The Steamers in OT, Bob. Maybe the biggest win of the year. Oh, my goodness. They got strung out themselves. Cleveland on that. We come back on the counter, and they gave Betancourt some space, and, boy, he did crank it. Duncan McEwen will get the assist. The Steamers have now won four in a row. Armando Betancourt with the goal. It is his 13th of the year. Duncan McEwen on the assist, his eighth. It comes at 4.58 of overtime, and the Steamers win it by a score of 3-2. Bob will have another look at it. It was a beauty. You see Keith, Fer Keith Ferpe hesitate a little bit, and that's all it took, one step. Armando, a happy man out of the University of Indiana. Well done for the Hoosier, huh? Boy, what a game. <laughs> My goodness. Duncan McEwen, good pass ahead to his right man, here. too. That's right. Furpy just hesitated a little bit. Gave Armando that chance, and boy, he's got a great left foot. Look at the steamers. Are they happy, and is he happy? Well, Bob Burnett is headed downstairs for tonight's Star of the Game show. Armando Betancourt is the offensive star of the game. Sammy Bick is the defensive star of the game, and I say hats off to both Ed Gettemeyer and Slobo for great jobs in the goal tonight. We'll be back with more from Cleveland in a moment. Steamers win it 3-2 in overtime. This is St. Louis Steamers soccer. <laughs> 